Hi, this is adult film star Victoria Paris, and whenever I'm in Florida, I always listen to Passion Falls with Aaron Summers. News, talk, and entertainment radio, 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. To talk with Neil, call 751-WIOD in Dade, 524-WIOD in Broward. Outside the 305 area code, it's toll-free, 1-800-944-WIOD. Holy cow! Customers can call Pound IOD at no charge. Now, the Neil Rogers Show. I got you there. On News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Jimmy Carter is looking for a miracle. The former president is trying to push puss in Bosnia. And my biggest problem is that I don't have balls. Since the 70s revival, it's a common scene in many doctor's offices. <laughs> you gotta tell me, please. Why can't I dance? Well, I'm afraid you have white meningitis. No! White meningitis, a tragic affliction causing so many to give up trying to get down. Staying alive, oh yeah, staying alive, woo! The symptoms are easy to spot. The inability to snap your fingers or clap your hands anywhere near the beat of music. Wow, what a groove! Dig it, baby! Your singing causes an instant gag reaction to all those standing next to you. Oh my God. And of course, when you're out, no one wants to stand next to you. Hi, guys. Ooh, look at the time, uh, yeah. Wait, where you go? Don't come, don't come back. We wish we could say there's hope for white meningitis, but there isn't. The only recommended course of action is rhythmic abstinence. Well, there must be something you can do. No, just stop what you're doing. You're embarrassing the hell out of us. 10.07 at WID. You're welcome, and happy Tuesday to you, man. We're going to be uh, burning it today, I'll guarantee you that. Just like, uh, what's his name? Warren Sapp and James Stewart, they were burning a few. I mean, how smart do you have to be to, like, go for a drug test? This is your big chance in life. You're going to be a big star in the NFL, baby. You're going to make millions of dollars, and now you've got to go to your uh, drug test. Of course, it don't really make any difference, because as it says later in the article here in the paper, it says, uh, well, uh, testing positive for drugs does not prevent a player from entering the league. It just makes them look like a real dummy, which we knew in the first place anyway. So the U.M. scandal continues. Everybody who goes through that nut house, that crap factory over there, is just another piece of walking turd. And like I said, what are they going to do now? What's Dion going to do and all these other hot shots now that they banned the schmatas from the NFL? Are you aware of that, that uh, this coming season they have banned all those bandanas and schmatas and uh, all that stuff? Even Willie Nelson's pissed off about it. He's not too happy. So how are they going to have that same old spirit without wearing them schmatas? I don't get it. Now, we're going to uh, zip through these calls today, man, like uh, Grant took Richmond. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. I shot Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, okay. You sound like you're full of it, too, man. He shot Winnie the Pooh. All right. Speaking of who shot Winnie the Pooh, that thing uh, yesterday, the one point that nobody wants to talk about, because all they're watching is whether Effley Bailey is as brilliant as everybody said, or if Mark Furman is going to crumble under the pressure and start making racist comments, the thing about him talking, walking uh, at 5.30 in the morning in the middle of June in L.A., and I don't care what anybody says, it's just not that light out at 5.30 in the morning in the middle of the summertime anywhere. And uh, from a distance, from yards away, he spies this small speck above the, I said speck, above the door handle on the Bronco, and he goes over to further investigate and has to use his flashlight to look like inside. It's so dark that he can't see inside, but it's light enough so that from yards away he can see this little speck which turns out to be blood above the door handle. And is anybody buying that? WIOD. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you a question. Yes. Have you ever been to St. Louis? Uh, very briefly. Very briefly? Hate it. it. I want to go. I'm going to go this weekend see the arch. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you're going to go to see the arch? Yeah, I've never seen it Why don't before. you just go to McDonald's and save a lot of money, man? It's the same damn arch. That's it's just bigger. Arches. I just want to see one. There's nothing to see, man. It's a, it's a horrible town. For real? St. Louis is disgusting. There's nothing to see there. Uh, the, uh, go in the middle of the summertime when the humidity is about 140%. No, it's no, no, a no, no, sweltering. No. It's a festering. Uh, you'll have a great time there. How about Australia? Ever been what, there? What's the second question? Have you ever been to Australia? No, I have not been down under. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Okay. Any chance, any place you get to go, man, from here, just grab it. Don't don't pass the chance. I'm flying. 
Do it. I love you, Neil. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great time, Pally. There's a guy. That's a smart guy. He's getting out of here. Let's get these phones cracking, baby, or we're shutting that transmitter off in about two and a half minutes, and we're going into that uh, Uncle Neil's Music and Call show. That's the new format, Uncle Neil's Music and Calls. That business you people pulled here yesterday, and then I had to come in here this morning. It's Tuesday, so, you know, the maid comes on Tuesday. I get in here real early. And uh, this place, man, was like a morgue. The phone was dead as a doornail. Rick is sitting here looking at Suds. He's looking at Boca Brian. They're looking at the ceiling. They're looking down at their pupic. And we had to go through like a herniatic thing just to get some of these bastards off their dead ass. If you think we're going to sit here and settle for this, you're probably right. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, and also, speaking of Vegas, speaking of going somewhere good, the Vegas trip is on. It's definite. I spoke to Bob Link Cohen yesterday. And uh, he also tells me that that Hank thing is a real ripoff. So if you want to get sucked into that Hank thing for 600 bucks and stay off on that side street there at the Hilton so he can plunge his brains out at the sports book, you go right ahead, baby. And it's on the 12th of May. It leaves on a Friday, comes back on a Monday. That's the Hank Goldstein trip on QAM if you want to pay 600 bucks. If you want to pay 489 and go with us on June 15th on a Thursday night, leaving Thursday and coming back on Sunday uh, in the afternoon, then uh, call Bob Lincoln. Because now he's taking credit card numbers, he's taking uh, anything you got. He'll cash, checks, whatever you got, he'll take it. Three nights at the Imperial Palace Hotel and Casino. Transfers, direct uh, non-stop round-trip flight from Lauderdale to Vegas. A welcome cocktail party for our group, Emperor's Breakfast Buffet, Legends and Concert Show, admission to the Antique Auto Collection, uh, rental cars at corporate rates will be available, room upgrades are available, etc., etc. So this isn't just a chance to get on the uh, plane with a big fat slob. Uh, like Hank, this is a chance to get on a plane with a big fat slob like me and go out there and do a whole bunch of things and have a great time at a good price. 489 bucks per person complete. Also, there are a few rooms if you got the big bucks at Caesars and you can talk to Bob Lincoln about that. 947-6050 is the number. 947-6050 in date and toll free from outside of date. 1-800-233-7264 June 15th. That's a Thursday. That's when we leave. It's going to be a great time. Everything is under control this time. No crap like the last time because we're keeping most everybody in the station out of it. 1-800-233-7264. So if you want to you get on the list, man, you better call him today because that thing is going to fill up fast. Not as fast as Hank's trip, of course. 12 pa- and I understand, by the way, guess who's going to be on that trip? A lot of the AKs, that's the rumor. The, it's the Alta Cocker flight. So if you want to be out there with all the people with their teeth in a glass, that's the flight to be on. Don't miss it. 12 past 10 at WIOD. When you- WIOD. We hired the best programming consultants in the business and then told him to go to hell. Get Bush. I f***ed him out. Sometimes I feel that life is passing me by. Sometimes I feel like life is passing me by. When I listen to your show, it just makes me smile. When I listen to your show, it just makes me smile. When I listen to your show, it makes me feel like a child. Neil Rogers on the radio. Neil Rogers on the radio. Neil Rogers on the radio. Hmm? You turd. Okay, 1016 at WIOD. Let's uh, get right to these, man. We're going we're gonna to get you on within like two seconds. Here's Kendall. Hello. What is that? Okay, like I said, we're going to get you on and off in two seconds. Even Aaron can't do that. Here's Miami. Hello. I believe the love is the Let's leave that on. Yeah. I <coughs> oh, I didn't realize they were going to play the music. I thought the music in calls was we play the music on this end. They're playing the music on that end. That's good. Okay, every line in Dayton Broward is wide open. 751-WIOD in Dayton, 5249. I got to believe, seriously, I said to Rick this morning, and I wasn't joking, I don't think the transmitter is on. I think whatever calls we're getting are just a few loyal people who have no life whatsoever and are just uh, calling out on a force of rabbit. I don't think the goddamn station is on the air the last two days. I got Friday off for that U.M. basketball game, which was a real piece of crap. And then uh, here we are again yesterday. The worst, the, not just an ordinary Monday. And not only that, then I leave here and I discover that it's raining cats and dogs out there, usually on rainy days. What else are they going to do? Going to go out and play golf? Are they going to play tennis? Are they going to grab their balls and go out and do something with them? I don't think so. And by the way, Brian, <coughs> these cigars of yours are killing me, man. These are the worst. Oh, talk about tearing up your throat. Uh, 
We got about 1,500 tickets left for the uh, Buffalo Panthers game at the arena tonight. 7:30. We'll see you there. Get in your seat early, right? At least by 8 o'clock would be good. We're only like almost at the end of the first period. For the Washington game Thursday, it says 2,000 tickets remain, and for Philly on Saturday, less than 200 because they're an exciting team and they got Eric Lindros, and we'll have about 5,000 Flyer fans there on Saturday. Damn it! Here's a mobile in North Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. You guys are the stuff, man. Yeah. You guys are it. We are why, it. I don't know why nobody's calling. I mean, I'm working. All of, just just out of nowhere. Last week was fine. All of a sudden, yesterday, man, it's like, okay, we're done. Give us something new to play with. Give us a new toy. I have no idea what these people want. Bunch of assholes. Exactly. Ponderous. Yeah. But tell you what, never die, never lose, buddy. We love you. Yeah, okay. Be good. Okay, love and kisses. We have an open line of date, 7512 and Broward, 524. Then they show yesterday in the uh, sports last night, they're showing the uh, crowds, if you can call them that, at the uh, Grapefruit League games. And they showed one, most of the uh, stands, there were like, uh, you know, five people over here, four people over there. Then they showed a close-up of a, some crowd in Surrey Soda, somewhere like, <coughs> God damn, Boca Brian, I'm going to shove these damn things up your ass. What did he do? Did he get these out in his backyard or something? Man, did, have you smoked these? Oh, these are the most gut-wrenching, throat-tearing pieces. <laughs> God. And anyway, the uh, crowd, the, as it is, there were like maybe 800 people at this one game. The youngest age was death plus 10. They were all not just blue hairs, but white hairs. Hair that had gone white and then blue and now white again on the second time around. I mean, I have never seen such a jury. And what, they don't know the difference. It's like when Duff's was in business. They go to a smorgasbord. You could put dog duty on a plate. Oh, here, here's some veal parmesan. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, they, how are they going to taste it? They're gumming it anyway. So how the hell are they going to taste the goddamn crap? So here's some baseball. Oh, yeah, it looks like baseball. They got bats. There's a guy over there. got some balls. That's great. Those are the only ones stupid enough to come out and subsidize this crap, this garbage, this subterfuge that's going on out there. Here's a lady in Lantana. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Hey, first time caller here. Great. Uh, just heading back up north where it's cold. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I've been down here for two weeks. Yeah, from where? From uh, near Albany. New oh, York? near Albany. Yeah, yeah. Like where? Like Kinderhook. Oh, sure. Like near Albany. Yeah, well, it's near Albany. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh... My buddy uh, turned me in on your station here, and uh, I've been hooked for two weeks. And... Well, we apologize for yesterday. The entire station was in a, our audience was in a coma yesterday. We're very sorry about that. Well, it sounds every good now to and me. then the uh, town just decides to do a Rip Van Winkle. Well, yes. Uh... <laughs> Which I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it was great, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, you, uh, you certainly make uh, Howard Stearns look like a. Uh, well, I don't know what. <laughs> like a turd burger, right? Yeah, a turd burger. Well, That's have great. a great life in Kinderhook. Hey, and uh, when I come back, I'm going to listen to you again. And uh, I got to really call one of my greatest buddies on the face of this earth, a douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> He's wonderful, and so are you. Well, what's his name? Does he have a name? It doesn't really mean much if you don't put a name to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, how about Everett? Okay. All right. See ya. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. How about C. Everett? We have an open line in Broward, 524. We have both of the passion lines at 1-800. Let's hear some more of those Victoria Paris uh, drops, man. She's going to drop it for you. Hi, this is adult film star Victoria Paris. Yes. And I listen to passion phones every chance I get. Oh, boy. You never know. Even Aaron could teach me a trick or two. Okay, maybe she could teach me one, too, so I can make some babies like that guy who called in yesterday. That was the best call. We had a very sorry lot yesterday, but I that was my favorite of the whole day was the guy who said he and his wife just had their first baby, and I ought to really seriously think about uh, doing it. As if we have an underpopulation problem. See, the problem is people like him are reproducing. People like Rick Alpern are reproducing. That's the problem of the human race. That's why there's little or no hope. Anyway, 1021 at WIOD. At 610 WIOD, we have a solution to the baseball strike. All of the owners and every player making more than a million dollars a year would be locked up in Miami Arena. They would eat only beets, Brussels sprouts, and prunes, drink only clam juice and bad red wine. Then, we turn on the PA system real loud for a lesson on life from Neil Rogers. I want my pornos, Nurse Ratchet. Baseball people think they got problems now. They'd be playing ball by Tuesday. Baseball people, hello. Call us when you're ready at News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. 10 WIOD. If we're talking too loud, you're too old. Buffalo blows and so do the bill. Oh! 
Sesame Street is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And here's your host, Joe Pesci. Yeah, yeah, happy anniversary. Today's show is brought to you by the letter F. Four. But what do you mean, four? Four's not a f***ing word. It's a f***ing number. What are you talking about over here? Funny. Funny? I'll give you funny. I'm supposed to be giving these f***ing kids an education over here. Beauty, beauty, fish. What the f*** kind of language is that anyway? I got your fish right here, you Scandinavian asshole. Friends. Just like me and Bert. Friends, my ass. Everybody knows about you and your buddy Bert there. A couple of f***ing faggot puppets floating around here, having different people put their hands up your ass, huh? What the f*** does that mean? You're a little bit more than friends, aren't you? This has been Joe Pesci. Happy anniversary, Sesame Street. Okay. All right, all right. 1026 at WIOD. We have an open line on the uh, blue line. And, of course, the passion lines, they don't get busy till 8 o'clock at night. But all across the state tonight. Is she bringing, she's having uh, Savannah on tonight, right? They're dragging the body out and going to do disgusting things with it on the air. Here's a pig report on the sawgrass. Hello? A pig report oh, on the sawgrass, yes? Let don't me worry about Aaron. We're going to get her off the air because of the filth she puts on there. The yeah. American family's going to get her off. Yeah, the American family? Yeah, okay. American family's going to get her off. You're a bunch of butt plugs. We're going to keep her on if she has a point five, just to spite you, you jackass, you moron, you redneck. We have an open line in Broward, 524, two on the green lines, 1-800-944. Here's a mobile in Hallover. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Ma'am? Uh, hi. Neil? Yes? How do you expect to get calls after those two jackasses yesterday? Andrew and Bob Green put on that big show about no more calls for talk show hosts. What are you talking about? You didn't hear it? No. I wasn't the only one who heard it. You better ask your listeners. Ask the them two, what? The two idiots were on there, and they refused calls, and they said, these are talk show hosts. Phil can do a show by himself. He doesn't need calls. Yeah. And so can Neil, and so can... I got news for you. We better start practicing doing it by ourselves, because the way you people are well, responding here, man, I wouldn't wish you. it on my great-grandmother. Uh, I know She's been people, dead for 100 years. I know there are people who believe them. They believe all the crap that comes that those two do. Yeah. Those two jerks. Right. I'm just telling you. I, I didn't know if you had heard it or not. No, I did not. Okay, you check it out. Okay. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Okay, thanks for giving me the answer report. We have an open line in Dade, 7511 in Broward, 524, and, of course, the two dead passion lines. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello, Mio. Yes, sir. Yes, I want to ask you a question. What is the uh, the cable guy that you use say it's really informative? Because I got cable, I mean, excuse me, satellite dish now. No, no, wait a minute. What, what, see, let's go back and speak English here. <laughs> what is the cable guy that I use? No, no, no. Satellite guy. The satellite TV guy. You know? Yeah, it's called Satellite TV Week. Satellite TV Week. Right. Oh, it's the big right. one. You can't miss it. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Good calls here this morning, man. They're uh, short and sweet and right to the point. Open line and uh, uh, Dade, 751. Two on the green lines, 1 800 944 9463. Here's uh, Miami is gone. Here's Holly. Uh, where are we going? Come on, let's get with it here. Get him out of here and let's do the show. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Yo, what's up with your Johnny for Cochran? Let's uh, do Hallandale. Hello. Morning, Neil. How yes, you sir. Doing? Okay. How about the Leaf Trade? The Leafs trade? Or, I'm sorry, we have future considerations. Oh, give me a break, will you? You're talking about this uh, Rich Sutter Rich kid Sutter, that they yeah. don't... His brother traded him away to Tampa Bay, and even they didn't want him? Yeah, I'm just wondering why the, the Leafs, Leafs wanted him. The Leafs suck, man. I watched part of that game last night. That bat. was another embarrassing performance. They couldn't stick it in an empty net. And they're getting 41 shots on goal. They stink. They really? got... There's no... There is no... There's no team. There are no uh, consistent lines. There's no nothing. They screwed up the chemistry of a great team that was in the final four two years in a row. Right. And as much as I like Matt Sundin, this team without Wendell Clark and Lefebvre and Bob Rouse in it, this team has got no balls. They're just a bunch of... Uh, Ridley is out there, and then uh, Mike Craig is out there for two minutes, and Dixon Ward, who belongs at Montgomery Ward. This... Uh, they screwed up a... Uh, just... They remind me of this station, man. They screwed up a good thing. There's no continuity at That's all. That's right. Right. Listen, what about this other kid? There are uh, five hundred team man they look like crap yeah you know you're getting 41 shots on goal and you, and you only put one puck in the net yeah uh, and they had 40 it. on saturday and they only scored two goals they yeah. can't they can't finish something's wrong what about this new kid uh jim carrey with uh the well Capitals? he don't play for the maple leafs he plays for washington yeah I'm, uh, he's I mean, great he's coming to town on thursday yeah and i think we're in a heck of a lot of trouble here 
Just hey, I got news for you, mister. We're in a heck of a lot of trouble no matter who's coming to town. <laughs> if Roger Nielsen doesn't discover that you got to score some goals to win a game, you can't keep playing Hartford and Ottawa every game. But, the but, only real team that we beat all season was Boston, the two games up there, on their little rink, because we got them frustrated as hell. And, and put a, them uh, to sleep. And put them into a coma, including Fred Cusick. And we're never going to be playing in the Garden again. That was the last game we'll ever play in Boston Garden. They're going to play in the Shawmut Center next year. And, and, and that's it. That's the only real team we've beaten all year. Well, I mean, And everybody's all excited. Oh, we won three in a row. We're doing it. Well, this, this team can put you to sleep, man. They've got to start waking up and playing some real hockey. They do. I mean, Roger's idea of offensive power is to He's a joke. His, a, he's a joke. Just, I bet you they're the, most, the, the best team in the league for icing. And, and it's going to come back and haunt them. Because Nobody wants to see that, okay? No, that's why, you know, the town in this crowd is comatose to begin with, but you put them into that arena and see the kind of hockey we've been playing in there yep. lately, yep. and you can hear a pin drop. And I can't blame those people. What are you going to get excited about? It's minor league. Bush league. It's minor league. And let's no open mistake. it up and uh, stick some in there tonight. You got it. Well, let's hope for and uh, let's see what happens Thursday. Okay. Okay, Neil. Good luck Thanks. to us. We need it. Open line of day. It's 7-5-1-2 in Broward. Five. This is the day, man. Either you people are going to get off your dead ass or we're going to go to all music starting tomorrow. I'll guarantee you that. Even though they stole most of my CDs back there, we got, we got thousands of hours of incredible crap back there. This is the deadest yesterday and today. I have never seen this town. It's usually dead, but there is something in the drinking water. There is something in the air. They got nothing. I asked that thing about, uh, about this, uh, the damn OJ thing that they're allegedly all worked up about and about how can Mark Furman see this little speck of blood in the, almost in the dark at 5.30 in the morning from several yards away, and nobody wants to talk about that, that they got all the answers, all the experts out there. And by the way, speaking of all those people defending O.J., on the other hand, Mary Ann Gertrude, guess what? They're not going to use her. Now, they were showing some of the opening statements again yesterday. And remember where Johnny and his Cochran is up there telling the jury, oh, well, we got eyewitnesses. First, we got Rosa Lopez, and he starts talking to China about that crazy old bitch. And, of course, we all know that they're not going to use that videotape because they were embarrassed as hell. And then there's another woman. Her name is Mary Ann Gertrude. And he says, a very interesting lady. Yeah, she's a very interesting lady, all right. She's a flake. She's a maniac. She's a nutcase. A very interesting, so interesting they decided that they're not going to use her to testify because she's too busy writing bad checks and being a flake and a fruitcake and making crank calls. Marianne Gertrude. This is the this is the case they got is the, the for the defense. They got two crazy old women who all of a sudden are seeing the Virgin Mary on a pop up to a tortilla, and that's it. So they're in big trouble, man. I don't care what you say. And if they just got, like, one more white person on that jury, they might have a chance of getting conviction, but I doubt it. Here's Miami on the purple line. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. Hi. It sounds like Woody to me. We have an open line on the cell line, pound IOD. Here's Miami. Hello. Good morning, Neil. How you doing, buddy? Okay. Hey, Neil, let's talk about those hot streaking Panthers, man. Yeah, they're hot. Oh, man. (coughs) I'm so proud of them. Yeah. And uh, number one, I'm going to go to a nice game. And then Brian Screw last night said... If he hear some booze from tonight's game, he's going to throw a hockey stick on all of the fans. Did he? Yup. Where did he, he say that? In, in uh, um, 560 WQAM. They had Brian Scroodlin out saying that if he hears booze, he's going to throw a stick in the crowd. Why doesn't he go out there and do something for crying out loud? Brian Scroodlin's been sticking the joint out. All he does is get a lot of stupid penalties. Yeah, really. Go out yeah. there and stick it in the net, Brian. Don't stick it in the stand. Stick it in the net would be a good idea. What says she's going to be tonight? Uh, Same one as always, sir. 125. Come by right, and I'll give great. you a big kiss. Okay. Cool. Goodbye. Open line and date, seven five one nine four six three. You got some nerve uh, chewing the fans out, Brian Scroodlin, you piece of turd man. You don't do anything. This man, he can't skate, he can't pass, he can't stick it in the net. He just gets a lot of really stupid penalties that cost us a lot of games is what he does, basically. He's the captain. The C stands for choke. Here's Hollywood. Hello. How you doing, sir? Yes, sir. Listen, um, uh, the, the, the guy that called before about uh, Phil's show yesterday, absolutely. It wasn't a guy. It was an old bag. I mean, a woman. Well, an old whatever. lady. Um, a yenta. Yeah, he was absolutely right. Uh, Phil, was, I was in and out of the car all day yesterday, and he took very few calls. I don't know if he took any calls yesterday. You know, I want to tell you how bad it was here yesterday, okay? He came on here. He said to me as I was leaving, he said, I'm going to sh- do a thing. I'm going to just do dead air and see how long I can let it go before for first, somebody... For the first 10 minutes. And for the show. first 10 minutes, this man <laughs> left dead air, and I think he only got like three calls with dead air. Yeah, he was going, how 105 WIL. Right, and then he would answer it like he was doing the switchboard. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm serious. We must either be going out of business here. And Bob Green's walking around here. Ah, ha, 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 boy, that was sure funny. Uh, you know, uh, potching around in the control room instead of taking care of business. This place, man, is on death's door or something. I don't know what's going on here with this audience. I think our whole audience died or got sabotaged. Well, that's why you 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 go to. And I'm sitting the there, I get calls.
calls from uh, the QAM people. Oh, uh, I had a bet with a guy about Rush Limbaugh, like they're fooling me, okay? They're trying to pump up Rush Limbaugh. They can't pump him up anymore. He's going to burst for crying out loud. Uh, Who the hell are they kidding? The audience has had three years in this town to hear his crap. They don't want to hear it, plain and simple, baby. They don't want it. I'd rather listen to Phil Henry's dead air than where's Rush Limbaugh. So anyway, he gets like, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, God, I know I had a rough day, but this is uh, unbelievable. Then he gets some uh, Julio on there. Oh, Baba Booey, how are this? How are I mean, it's just, uh, it's it's amazing. <laughs> one, I have to ask you one question. It's a goddamn communist plot, I think, is what it is. I, I agree. And then Rick is telling me this morning that there's only seven uh, Anglos left in Dade County. The new the new census numbers came out. There's only seven uh, Anglos left in Dade County. Everybody else is either Hispanic, Haitian, black, uh, of undetermined origin, or whatever. And well, we're sitting here trying to do a radio show? Absolutely. And nobody even speaks our goddamn language here. <laughs> I'm one, serious. One question, sir, I have to ask you. When you first started at Zeta, you say that there was uh, you and the bird, and uh, it, was not, it was not Capri at the beginning. No, it was, was that Dan Lee, uh, what Lee, the hell was his what name? What was his last name? That's what I was trying to figure out the other day. You called him the watermelon. That guy man. that had all the bad uh, drug problems. Lee, uh, he was over here on the coast briefly, and I told him, don't hire this guy, and they did. And then, of course, he, he's, what was that guy's name? The blonde surfer, uh, Lee, um, the one I worked on the coast briefly, he used to be on with us on Zeta right in the very beginning with a big, deep voice. Because I listened to you the first day you were on Zeta. Come on, George. Jesus, you're as useless as a dead frog's fart. Lee Fowler. Yeah, Lee Fowler, right. No, it wasn't Lee, Lee Fowler. Fowler. <laughs> oh, God. Well, somebody... He'll find out from somebody that's got a good Lee memory. Gillette. Lee Gillette. L Thanks, Lee Mel. Gillette, thank that's you. It's a close right. shave, but that's as close as we could come. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Bye-bye. Lee Gillette. And, of course, he sat in there for a couple of days, and he didn't like all that uh, fag humor on here. Couldn't... What is that? Where is that? Get rid of that thing. Oh, here's Bob Lincoln, who's got the new index. Don't get a hernia, mister. And by the way, Hank Goldberg really pissed off at you. Not really, but I thought I would say that. We make up a lot of stuff about that Hank Goldstein. If you want to go to Vegas with a lot of old farts, man, it's the Hank Goldstein tour on uh, for only about $10 million. You want to get ripped off big, call up QAM immediately, if not sooner. 600 bucks to stay at a place that's so far off the strip, you're going to have to bring your own goddamn bus to get over there and have any fun. 1037 at WIOD. And what are you getting nervous about in here? You are so out of touch with reality, George. He doesn't even remember Lee Gillette. I when, never met the man. When's he taking his drug test? Pressed by the host, guest, or callers on WIOD are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors. All WIOD programs are copyright 1995 by WIOD Incorporated and may not be recorded or distributed without prior written consent. Okay, 1041 at WIOD. Here's the worst facts in the history of this radio station right here, okay? The worst facts ever. And there have been many from the same asshole, okay? Dear Neil, this, this goes to show you what the definition of chronic is. People who have no lives, these little groupies who just go around from station to station, sucking around, looking for a life, looking for some validation as a human being. Dear Neil, I was in studio at WQAM on the radio live Sunday between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. with Phil Shane, sharing my incredible sports knowledge and wisdom with the listening audience. Of course I mentioned Neil Rogers between the commercials. Nobody at that station has any idea how chronic I am during your incredible show. Hank Goldberg personally invited Andy from Bonaventure and myself to go on his Vegas trip. Neil, I would much rather go on your trip. Please let me go, question mark. I'm really not that bad of a guy. The answer is no, Greg from Boynton Beach or wherever now, formerly a Greg from Pompano. No. Bob Lincoln's in the building right now. He's written your name down in indelible ink on his ass, okay? No chance. No way, Jose. Greg, go with Hank, man. He'll love you. He'll let you sit on his lap, which covers a lot of territory, baby, you ass sucker. I'm taking complete responsibility for the West Palm Beach audience now that I work in Boynton Beach. I'm going to turn over the graves of all those dead people and wake their asses up. No, I think you'd be doing something else with their asses, Greg, but we'll leave that to your imagination. I'll have those passion lines loaded up within a couple of months. Love, Greg. You are just a butt-sucking fool, man. Just another chronic, and th don't ever put him on the air again under penalty of death. Here's a mobile in Hope Sound. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Let me say it again. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. I'm here. Hello. I'm here. Hello. Let me say it again. Turn that radio down, Hello. sir. Turn the radio down. Turn that thing in the off position. Okay. It's and the off. radio, too. Yes. Okay. Yeah, what can we do for you today, sir? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know what Neil thought about Dan coming into town. About who? Dan Quayle coming into town. Well, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> I guess you, Neil. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah, it's me, man. All right. It's me. <laughs> 
We're from Pensacola, Florida. We're on our way up north on 95 right now around Hope Sound. Yeah. And heard that Dan Quayle was coming into town. Just want to know what you thought. Do you want to give that. me a short answer? Uh, yeah, sure. That's it. <laughs> That's Have a great it. day, Pally. Okay. I get a new phone. The worst. We have an open line today. I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm serious right now. You know, Phil can do all his little jokes with uh, Bob Green Jr. and this one Jr. You people don't start getting off your dead ass. I have no idea what bug you got up in there this week. This is the absolute all-time worst. I mean, talk about Neanderthal. There is nobody alive in this goddamn town this week. Maybe it's the opening of that new Publix. Maybe they couldn't handle the pressure. Maybe it was those lenders' bagels. Maybe too many of them made them sick. I have no idea what the deal is. And this old bag is calling up, giving me a spy report. Oh, that Bob Green and that Steve Nichol were on with Phil, and they're not going to take any more cards. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, come on. Give me a break already, you old bag. Go get a life. Get a goddamn colostomy bag and squeeze it. Do something for uh, fun. Go with Fat Rich. Sit on his lap at the track. Open line and date, one on the purple line, one on the blue line, one on the passion line, one on the red line, one on the center ice line. Here's North Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, Neil, how are you, bro? Well, yeah. Okay, bro. Hey, what's up? Well, uh, speak in English. Come on, hey. let's get with it. <laughs> hey, Neil, you notice uh, Catalio, she resembles so much uh, this uh, this girl in the in the O.J. Simpson case. Who? Kathy Lee and the, and the, and the Regis, Regis... Kathy show. Lee, that disgusting, psychotic bitch. Yeah, she resembles so much the uh, Marsha Clark, bro. You look at it, <laughs> she reminds me so much of Marsha Clark. What yeah, they're both ugly, exactly. <laughs> they both got a big thing on their lip, right. <laughs> they're both bitches, bro. Yeah, they're so both disgusting, up? ugly bitches. Yeah, yeah you, you, Neil, you, 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 you lick them real hard, right? In fact, you know what Regis said about uh, the thing on Kathy's lip, don't you? Well, I don't know. Bro. It's big, Neil. It's bigger than both. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you think you think Kathy will be going with Regis sometimes? Yeah, what? Kathy Lee's going with Regis and you. We have two open lines in Dade. Seven five one. One on it. See what I mean? There's no uh, there's no English speaking people in Dade County anymore, man. There's like five people left. There were seven about 20 minutes ago. Now we're down to five people in Dade County who speak at English, and everybody else is from a banana boat. What kind of a place is this? And we're trying to do a talk show here, and we wonder why all of a sudden it's like they pulled a goddamn plug. Who are we kidding? Two open lines in Dade. Why the hell was anybody be calling in Dade when they know speak at English? How about Radio Romance? No wonder that's number one already, man. They, they, before they even put it on the air, it was number one. Already. Oh, Spanish music. Ah, si. Ah, bueno, bueno. Ah, ba, 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 Sure, number one. I tell you one thing. Let's just start playing all Luis Miguel all day. That's the only way to get an audience in goddamn Dade County. I'm not taking another call until we get those two Dade County lines lit. I'm telling you right now. 751 WIOD. I want two white Anglo assholes in Dade County who speak English right now. Man, I have just worked myself into a mental hernia these last two days, and for all the good that it might have... And then my little dog decides he's going to crawl under the fence this morning. That started my morning off. I should have gone right back to bed. Crawls under the fence because my next-door neighbor's got a fence and a dog. And my dog decided the only problem is he came back. That's the only guy. And, of course, I'm talking about the miniature pincher. Don't ever, I beg you, don't ever get yourself a min pin. You'll, you'll uh, rue the day that you were ever born. Vero Beach. Vero Beach. Absolutely correct. I'm yeah, okay. Let's go to uh, Kendall. Hello. Hello. Just y remember, they used a flashlight in the Bronco so he could see through the tinted windows. And he yeah. just walked up to the Bronco and he saw the blood on there. I mean, he, he said that it, it was it was still away. it was still not daylight. It was well, still like he, di he didn't say it was daylight. I know he it's said not. He saw the Bronco. He started walking toward it. He saw something on a smudge uh, next to the door handle. But wait, he, he didn't say, wait out. a minute. He didn't say a smudge. There wasn't a smudge. It was like a small I'm speck sorry, of blood. A speck, a smudge, whatever. He yeah. walked up, but he didn't see it from 20 yards away. Nobody can do that. How close was he? About uh, six inches. About, I'm not asking about his personal life. I'm asking how <laughs> close he was. Hey, just remember, viva Cuba. Okay. There's the guy that finally got his act together. Right at the end of the call. We have an open line in Dade, 751. We have two on the green lines, 1-800-944-9463. Let's go to, uh, you're still back on Vero Beach. We did that 15. Get that Bob Lincoln out of here already, okay? Thanks for the book. Go back to the office, answer the phone, and make some reservations, and get out of here. Quit hogging. Everybody and their brother comes in that goddamn room. It's like the Christian science reading room in there. Bob Green comes in there. Go do some work somewhere. Go do something constructive. It would be a first. I'm not talking about you, Bob Lincoln, but in your case, probably the same thing applies. Here's uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm Lee English. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, okay. Yeah, see? Listen, a long-time uh, resident from Miranda Coit High. Wow. Wow. 
Don and Bob's residence. You know that my Aunt Dorothy from Rochester is visiting my mother, as she does at this time, every year for three weeks, and she's from Irondequoit. No kid. How do you like that? Yeah. Hey, listen, this is a question here. Is Did Steve you Re- know the Rubens of Irondequoit? Well, it's a big town. A big town? <laughs> yeah, Irondequoit? Pop- pop- population, 2,500. 25, yeah. Hey, listen, is Seabreeze Park still there? No. Oh, that's a shame. I grew up in that place. Don and Bob's. Or maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't... Uh, that was a great... I don't gr- think so. Great old park. Listen, yeah. I wanted to... There, I know that Don and Bob's there is no longer. The only one is still the original one, and that was bought by somebody else from yeah. Wendy's. Well, that's the only Don and Bob's I know, the one that was on Seabreeze. You never went to the one on Monroe Avenue by uh, Brighton High, by Brighton Elementary, where I went to school? Yeah. Right next to... Well, that's Don and Bob. What do you mean, yeah? You said the only one you know no. is at Seabreeze. I said you don't know the no, one no, on no, Monroe no. Avenue. I left there. I left there in the 50s. So, you well, know, the Don and Bob's was there. I went to school there in the 50s. I'm from around the court. I didn't get up to Monroe Avenue that often. Oh, excuse me. Well, I should have known that. Hey, listen, uh, I wanted to comment a big-time uh, Warren Sapp. You see that he wouldn't shake that kid's hand when he got his autograph? Warren is a Sapp, man. If ever anybody had a perfect name, this guy goes to take his drug test. Is he's positive funny? for cocaine. <laughs> he's positive for marijuana. He's positively an asshole, man. I thought about Typical you. Typical U of M, man. I exactly. I thought about you. You called him such an asshole when that thing came out this morning. Here's the guy's up for uh, NFL review. Yeah. And he He's out there doing crack and, and he cocaine. flunks all the goddamn drug tests, man. Typical U of M, a real somebody we can really be proud of, a real role model for America. He probably blew a few million. There you go, or blew something. Couldn't Have a happen. great day, Pally. I'll see you at the Sea Breeze. You betcha. I'll see you at, at Charlotte, uh, whatever. Gotcha. Bye. We have an open line in uh, Broward, 524. We have one on the, uh, on the purple line, man. This cellular one thing has turned out to be a real bummer. See, what happened with this whole goddamn radio station is when they realigned 85,000 lines just so we can handle the passion lines there at night for that big high-rated 1.0 show. Hi, this is adult film star Victoria Paris. Hi, and Victoria. whenever I'm in Florida, I always listen to passion phones with Aaron Summers. Did you hear the way she said it? Passion phone. I got you down. Okay. 1050, Victoria, at WIOD. 610 WIOD. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Neil Rogers. I killed Nicole. I killed Nicole. I killed Nicole. Here's the Lady Mobile in Lighthouse Point. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Um, listen, Neil. Yes. Um, I just have a real problem with these uh, people taking over in Miami. And with these people taking over well, in Miami? Who are these people? You know who I'm talking about. You address them quite frequently. Who are these people? Well, the people from Cuba, the Haitians, the foreigners. The foreigners? Okay. When are they coming to town? Foreigner? Uh, yeah. I like foreigner. Well, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Well, she sounds as uh, cold as ice. Listen. Yeah. Uh, so, so what the hell does that mean, taking over? Let me tell you something. When people move out, do you know why the whole area right up the street here at 79th and Biscayne, do you know why that area is the way it is today? Because everybody else moved out. That's why. No, because we have weak representation. No, it's got nothing to do with representation of anything. It's got to do with people running away and moving out, okay? And moving up to places like uh, Plantation Acres way out west there. Well, Which, by the way, it's pretty nice there. Yeah, I believe it is. I like it. But... A small solution to something that I read. And guess what? If you think you're going to move away from anything, go out of the Sawgrass Mall, which is right next door to my house, and you'll find every foreigner who's ever been born, nobody in there speaks of the English. Oh, uh, this, so what are you talking about? Well, this is a small solution that I came up with. I read it in an article. It's great. Cater to them there. Keep them there, because I sure as hell don't want them in my neighborhood. You don't want Cubans in your neighborhood, huh? I don't want any of them in my you neighborhood. You don't want black people in your neighborhood? And where are you from? <laughs> Lighthouse Point. No, I mean, where are your ancestors from? <laughs> Germany. Oh, Germany. <laughs> okay. Trace this call, man. Keep that bitch out of my neighborhood. Nazi bitch. We have an open line in Broward, 5249463. Oh, yeah, Germany. And she's got a nervous laugh while she's Ava Brown Jr. right there on the phone. You notice Greta Vance, uh, Brown hasn't been on the air yet on CNN. That was probably her calling in right there. Keep all those spicks and niggers and Jews and fags and uh, keep them on dagos out of my neighborhood. Where are you from? Germany? Oh, Sig Heil. That must be Wayne Jr. right there on the phone doing a voice. You disgusting. You know, and I've mentioned this many, many times, and it's true, going back to the old W. Snooze days and the Emmy Schaefer days. Why is it that, I mean, there's always Enos the Pina Shira, but he's an exception. Why is it that the women are the ones who are so bigoted? You know what I'm talking about? 
I mean, they're just, uh, for example... Have a nice day. Yeah, that's all. Here we are years later. We had went through all this bilingual crap and through the immigration and the Marielle, which was a nightmare. I agree with that. But, I mean, but the women now, that's all they still want to talk about. If we talked about that, we could do just like Sandy. We could do 50 hours on bilingualism and smelly, nasty Cubans every goddamn day here and never never have a shortage of women callers. But if we want women callers on anything else, oh, they're, they're not out there. They're busy uh, with their soap opera. They're busy with OJ. They're busy uh, with each other. They're busy with Aaron. Uh, play doh or play doll or uh, with their honey beer. But God Almighty, if we were talking about the uh, Cubans again, all the women would be hocking a chinik from Germany. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Um, yesterday you played that Casey mix from Germany. Yes. Why don't you play some regular Casey? That would be a little bit different. Yeah. You haven't done it in so long. I'd rather talk to people. That's what the show's all about. I know it is. I don't want to play any goddamn Casey as much I as I like the don't. guys. Okay. He never stole a fart train. Okay. But I don't want to play any music. I want to talk to you, my uh, audience out there, man. But it's a good... I'll keep it in mind. Okay. Get out of here. Probably Casey himself. He needs the residuals desperately. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. 524, no speaking of... I don't want those people in my neighborhood. What a disgusting, obnoxious bitch! What a bigoted... I'm going to use the C word right now, okay? What a... How do, what's another word, way we can say it? We've got a different word for uh, everything else. How can we say the C word? Can't. You can say can't. You can't? You can. Can't? You disgusting can't. Oh, I like that. I like the way it sounds. That's well, you we're talking... That, uh, that's you football? we're talking about, honey, as in see you next time. What is it? What's that thing they do with the football? Punt? I said can't, bitch. Here's, uh, I mean, how, how can you just, I mean, we all have prejudices, and God only knows the longer I live, the more that I get of them. I mean, especially about certain kind of uh, hot dog uh, bandana-wearing assholes like Deion Sanders. I'm serious. He, he is the worst, the worst thing that black people in America could have going is assholes like Deion Sanders and Dennis Rodman, man. They just turn off almost everybody else to the point of where you just become disgusted, man, nauseated. I can't stand, and Warren Sapp, there's another thing with that, with all this drug crap. Drug crap and Warren Sapp. It got a nice uh, rhyme to it. Let's uh, make a couple lines out of that. He'll, uh, here's Homestead. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes. Uh, how's it going? Okay. Uh, I work for uh, a certain phone company down Homestead. I don't want to say which one. They might be listening. Yes. And I've, uh, I've been in school for the last few weeks. I've been going through withdrawals. I couldn't hear you. Really? Yeah, but I'd, I'd like to say that you'd be amazed at how fast some of these Cubans speak English when you tell them they're not going to get service. That's true. All like Rosa sudden, Lopez. Exactly what she's you're not saying. Cuban, she's from El Salvador. Well, that is a scam that a lot of the older Cubans pull, as they know us speaking English. In fact, if you remember the movie with, um, oh, what the hell, my tutor, with, uh. Uh, 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 what was his name, Matt LaPanzi. My tutor. Well, I'm not sure. And if he, I know. No, well, they had Mexican help, where they were the, uh, you know, the uh, the house uh, help, whatever they were, and they always put on a big act that they couldn't speak it in English. Then all of a sudden, uh, we discovered they speak uh, speak perfect uh, speak. English. Yeah, but I, I have the the fortunate ability to speak some Spanish because my wife's Spanish too. So yeah. when they don't understand one. So, and so what, start, wait a minute, what, what does me? this have to do with the price of peanuts? Where, where, where are we going? Are we going to do another Emmy Schaefer show today? Is that it? <laughs> We're going to talk about goddamn Cubans today? Is that it? Oh, Cubans are great. Yeah. They Some of your best in... friends are Cuban, too, right? They keep me in business. No, no, Why don't no. you go back to no. Cuba, you spick bastard? <laughs> have a great day, Pally, okay? And uh, don't wear out the sheets. Fasten your seatbelt. News, talk, and entertainment radio, 610 oh, WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. IOD. I have a very small penis. Show me yours, I'll show you mine. It's okay, I got it out. News, talk, and entertainment radio, 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. You jackass. To talk with Neil, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward. Outside the 305 area code, it's toll free 1 800 944 WIOD. You turd. And cellular one customers can call Pound IOD at no charge. Now, The Neil Rogers Show on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Oh, Neil, my queen, God. Hi, I'm Greta Van Susteren, trial attorney and legal commentator for CNN. And you know, a couple of people have asked me about my beauty secrets, so I've decided to make them available to those of you who have a desire to be as handsome as I am with the Van Susteren School of Beauty. Girls, 
Are you troubled by those full, luscious lips in the center of your face? Well, here's our simple method for correcting that problem. Just take a look at some of our first graduates. Candy Crowley. Brett Butler. Mary Madeline. Bonnie Raitt. And of course, the lovely Janet Reno. The Manchester School of Beauty helped remove those ugly scabs from my face and put them back on my legs where they belong. And remember, girls, if it's the hair you're worried about, there's plenty of Vitalis to go around. You're gonna be a real beauty at the Manchester School of Beauty. I love it. And, of course, the timing could be better because we heard from Greta von Braun only uh, moments ago in that last hour, that disgusting, smelly German bitch. Now, I will confess, yes, I do have many prejudices, but when it comes to Germans, that I put very up high on the list. I'm not saying that there aren't some nice German people. I haven't met too many, but I'm sure. In fact, when I was a little kid, we had Germans. Their name was Schultz. Lived right on the corner next door to our house. The Schultzes, they had a, even their little dog was a Nazi. I'm serious. They, they had a little nasty, uh, what the hell kind of a dog was it? A, German like, Shepherd? No, no, a little dog. A little uh, kind of like Tiny, only uh, more obnoxious if that's possible. A little white dog, and uh, he would bark out, and it would sound like Sieg Heil. Sieg Heil. <laughs> you, could, you could hear it in the barking. The dog was trained to be a goddamn Nazi. and used to put his paw at a 45-degree angle up in the air as you would come outside and make anti-Semitic slurs, because we happen to be... And the people lived next door to us, their name was Fleischer, which is a very Jewish name, and it was a very uncomfortable thing when they used to have those rallies out there in the street corner. Boy, too bad that Pat Buchanan wasn't around then, and Rick Riley. Here's Plantation Acres on the Purple Line. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, how you doing today? Okay. Okay, quick hockey question. Yes. Uh, if we're set the two-minute minor towards the end of a shift, while that man's in the penalty box, can we make a line change? Well, what do you mean, can they make a line change? I mean, it stops play. Of course you make a line change. Oh, uh, they do it right when the penalty is assessed, I guess? Well, the guy doesn't just go in a penalty box and the game keeps going on and they stop play. Right, right. And generally, I... when there's a penalty, when the one team gets the power play and the other team is shorthanded, there's always, almost always, a uh, shift change because, you know, you want to put on your penalty killers and they want to put on their big line if they're not out there already. Okay, that is. Got it? Okay. We have an open line on the purple line. Welcome to Hockey Talk, baby. We're icing it for you. A pound IOD on it, cellular one line. Let's do uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, buongiorno, Neil. Buongiorno. Como va? Hey, bene. Ah, molto bene. Couple things. First of all, TCI Cable. Seen their truck yesterday in my area. Yeah. And their logo on it says, we take television into tomorrow. <laughs> now, they take it so far into tomorrow. You got to put them into tomorrow. They can't see the picture yet. I lose the goddamn picture. Yeah. You're right. They all suck. Cable companies blow. Terrible. And if people weren't so complacent, everybody would out there be buying their DSS dish right now. Well, unfortunately, I live in a townhouse, and we can't have a dish. Why not? Well, you can't have the little dish? Maybe a little dish. You mean like a the small 18... plate? No, I'm serious. You can't get the 18-inch dish? No, we're not allowed to have anything on our roof. It doesn't go on the roof. It goes on the side of the house. I don't know. But what, now, see, but listen to me. This is sad. If you could see I the know. difference in the picture quality and the, the you pay for the same amount you're paying for cable now or less, you'd be getting a zillion channels and you'd have a beautiful... I was watching a hockey game last night. I was watching several of them. In fact, there were four games played last night. They were all on the uh, Direct TV. They had all of them last were night. Were the Penguins on it? The Penguins were on here with oh, Mike God. Lang and KBL. That's right. Yep. They beat Montreal's ass. They're tough this year. And he said, Michael, Michael, motorcycle, and how much chicken can you eat, and stuff like that. It was great. <laughs> the great Mike Lang. That's right. Yep. Listen, also... But you're not going to do it. I know. Ah! No, I'm, I'll check it out. i got to check it out with the association. Let, let me tell you something. Can I give you a piece of advice? Sure. Let the association suck wind, okay? Just go out there, talk to somebody who knows something about it, like at Brands Mart or Standard Brands, and do you, which way does your... Uh, do you have a south... Oh, I face south. The West. Perfect! Perfect! You put it in, in the backyard, like right in the ground. They'll never even see it. You put a bush around it or something, they'll never even know it's there. I'm telling you, man, do it. All right. You'll love it. You'll thank me. You'll kiss me all over my toes and feet for it. Ooh. Okay. Also. Yes. You know, the Dolphins I, fans, I hope they don't think they bought a winner when they got Eric Green. Yeah. You know, they spent lots of dollars for him. But... 
Yeah. Yeah. You're choking today. Well, his on name their, on your cigars. His name was uh, Green, and they got Joe Green, and he also played for Pittsburgh. So yeah. how bad can that be? I think Eric Green's a hell of a tight end myself. He's but what a, do I know? He's a good one. I don't know if he still has his. Uh, Problems with drugs. But, oh, uh, well, he, now listen, coming down here, that should straighten him out in no time. Oh, yeah. Have a great day, Pally. Okay. Don't be a sap. We have an open line at Broward, 524-9463. Warren is a sap. What a bad break for U of M again. Another black mark on the U of M football program. Oh. What a bad break. How many girls' schools they play in this year, by the way? What a joke that place is, man. My U- University of Misery. That's a college like uh, I'm a goddamn brain surgeon at place. What a joke. What an absolute total disgrace. It's drug you, baby. D-U. M-B. Yeah, that's right. They, they get an M-B when they graduate from there, as in D-U-M-B. How dumb can you be? And don't forget, now, what are they going to do if they ban the schmatas in college football? If the NCAA starts cracking down on that, oh, I shouldn't have said cracking down. 12 after 11 at WIOD. IOD. If you're old, gray, and wrinkled, too bad for you. If I had the teeth, damn it, I'd kick my own ass outside. Okay. Skip out the top of the bubble, the bubble, the bubble. O.J. Simpson was a hero. Loved by millions across the land. He went to visit his ex-wife now. She was hanging with another man. Oh! Juice went home now for a knife and ski mask and a pair of gloves and back he went. She was tipping her friend the waiter and giving more than 15%. Well, Juice couldn't take it. Started slicing and dicing, don't you know? Was at the airport before they fell. He made a touchdown in old Chicago. It checked in at the Alibi Hotel. But the LADA, well, he flagged OJ for illegal procedure <clears throat> with a knife. That's a prison yard penalty, he said with conviction. That's what you get when you hack the wife out on the LA freeway in a getaway Bronco, pressing something to his skull, wishing he was dead. But it was a cell phone, no, not a pistol. Suicide by tumor. Deep in his head. Oh, well, he finally got a mic. Now it's up to the jury. But he will surely be in jail for life. And now the people, they all say they feel bad for OJ. They forget it ain't okay to hack the wire. Hmm. How come time made OJ so black? Yeah, but. 1117 at WIV. Here's a very disturbing fact. It says, Dear Neil, I have a deep dilemma. That chronic Greg from Pompano slash Boynton Beach who keeps faxing you all at and trying to call your show and is over at QAM and dragged me along with him on Sunday uh, has got a crush on me and keeps trying to hit on me. Right during the uh, show at QAM, he tried to penetrate me right in front of the talk show host, Phil Latzman. It was a very embarrassing event, and I don't know what the hell to do about it. All of my friends are discussing this, although I am quite attracted to him and perhaps may allow him to do it next time he tries. What do you think, your friend Andy in Bonaventure? You think Andy should uh, get together with Greg? Maybe that might they can work out their frustrations together? We probably have some penetrating thoughts on this. Here's a pig report of Mobile in Weston. Hello. Hey, good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. Pigs are out and about on Saddle Club. That's it. Saddle Club Road in Weston. Yes. That's it. Thank you so much, sir. Take care. Ron and have over. a great day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. 
Open line at Broward, 524-9463. So maybe we can get some kind of like advice to the Lovelorn uh, comments from our audience out here for Andy and Greg, who obviously are having a, uh, farting, a parting of the ways, or not. Maybe they're having a meeting of the minds, a meeting of the meet. Here's Miami Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes. Neil. Yes, I am. I'm very disturbed. You know, that, that bitch, Obviously. That, that bitch that called up uh, about the Germans. You know, I was a POW in Germany. I was shot down. And uh, believe me, that that you got to be careful when they smile, boy. Watch out, boy. Yeah, watch out. Because Although I'll be honest with you, that uh, I was in Berlin once, and I never saw anybody smile. Well, they so were, I felt very they, confident. They smile, but believe me, they they don't like us. Zika, Zika. They they may think that we're good, and they tell us how good we are. Well, but what do you mean us? Either the Jews or the Americans. Well, that goes or without saying, you. yeah. What? I, you know, the, I was a Jew in Germany in POW camp, and believe me, it, it was not comfortable. Yeah. Anyways, about... Uh, about That's what Andy from uh, Bonaventure said. He said it was not comfortable. Oi! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, about uh, O.J., what disturbs me is I think he is guilty, but however, there's no blood. There's no lot of blood around him. I mean, wh where is all his clothes? In a, in a bag somewhere. You have to ask Al Cowlings about that. It's in the bag, man. Yeah, well... Ask the bag man. I killed Nicole. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I doubt very much if he could do it that fast. Because there What do you a... mean? If he had a shovel and a big plastic sack in the uh, Bronco, why is it unreasonable to believe that he had a duffel bag? Well, that's possible. That's yeah. possible that he had a change when he was driving back because there's a very short time frame right. between the act and when he w was back to his house in the, in the limousine. Right, about 15 minutes. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's a short time minutes. to clean up, you know. Yeah. There must have been blood all over this. Well, there was a guy. bloody sock upstairs. He kind of left a little trail. You know, he went outside and he uh, tried to bury the, he uh, tossed the glove and he went into a panic and then he ran inside and by that time he'd obviously uh, taken all the stuff off and uh, tossed the sweater, whatever he was wearing, into the uh, sack. Yeah, well, you know, that also, the tossing the glove, that, 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 that's no sense. I mean, what the hell? I mean, well, he didn't toss it. He just uh, probably dropped it. You think he really dropped it? He dropped it, or who the hell knows what he did yeah, with it? Yeah, because that's that's that disturbs me. I know I know he's guilty, but you yeah. know, how, how do you get these facts together? That's I think that's going to be a problem. Well, he's going to get off anyway, so I, I wouldn't worry about it. I think this guy's going to he's going to walk. He's going to walk. You're right. Yeah, you're and right. then he's going to run like a son of a bitch. Trust yeah, me. Well, he's going to make. He always a lot could of... run like hell, even with those bad arthritic knees. You watch him run. Yeah, he's going to make a lot of money too. You on bet. This damn thing. And he'll have a book. Too. He'll have a movie. He'll have his own goddamn show. He'll be bigger than yeah. Jenny Jones. I'll tell you. That's right. And well, have a great day, amigo. Thanks a lot. See ya. We have an open line in Dade, 751. I mean, the guy's Jewish, and I'm calling him Amigo. It's Dade County. It's part of the ambiance here. And all you Cuban haters, man, call up Sandy Payton. She'll be glad to have your call, and she'll probably reinforce everything you like. Everything you want to say, man, she'll repeat it. Boy, oh, boy. Some of these people that just keep harboring this uh, this, uh, this bitter... This... Have a nice day. Exactly, Sandy. Lovely lady. You tell him. Bitch. Let's talk about Sandy Payton a while, okay, and about how all the people that worked here, including Roger Magalin and Mike Ranieri, they probably wouldn't admit it now because they're over there with her on, on Waxy, on Waxy Jr. But, boy, when she was here, they hated that bitch like the producers hated her, the engineers hated her, because on the air she came up with this real sweet sugar-coated phony image. But in person, in fact, the only person that liked her was uh, Cheryl, was the only person in the building that liked her, and that's because Japs of a Feather uh, go shopping together. It's 1122 at WIOD. There's no reason. 610 WIOD. Listen longer, and you'll get an attitude, too. Don't they understand that I would jump in front of a bullet for Nicole? OJ, 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 OJ. You killed Nicole. But the, the, um... That night, when she turned off all the lights, there's no place where she could hide. Oh, no, O.J. was gonna get her. O.J. went out to kill 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 her.
you turd. It's true. OJ is gonna come after you. And then he'll get away with that one too. Oh yes. OJ's gonna get ya. OJ's gonna get you. OJ's gonna get you. OJ's gonna get you. Did you, uh... Are you sure? Okay, 1128 at WIOD. We got a little dilemma here because I guess uh, Mark uh, Furman, the German, is going to be back on a witness stand today before he takes off for northern Idaho. You know, it's really interesting. By the time the trial is all over, Rosa Lopez will be in El Salvador. Uh, Marianne Gertrude, who will not even testify, she'll have a ass in uh, federal prison somewhere. Uh, Mark Furman, he'll be in North Idaho with the Aryan Nation. I mean, and of course, O.J., uh, oh, he slipped out again. Jeez, we forgot about him. We're trying to keep track just like when he was in the house that day. Remember? Remember that famous day in Vegas? We're all out there on our Vegas trip last year. You know something? It was our trip with Bob Lincoln to Vegas that incited this entire event to take place. It was the inspiration for America for the O.J. business was our trip to Vegas. And I'm sitting there in my room, sick as a dog, and I turn on the TV, and there's this uh, car chase up and down the freeway. And I said, what the hell is that? Where's Spigot? There's the freeway. And it just went on and on and back and forth. Then the next day, we had the thing that Bobby Shapiro was in there, and he's making this uh, plea. Oh, uh, OJ, give yourself up. What's this all about? Uh, Come out of my house. It was a beautiful thing. And here we are months and months and months later, and we're still... uh, So I don't know what I'm going to do when that damn thing starts, because F. Lee Bailey's going to be grilling him again. They say that F. Lee might actually take a little oxygen because his performance yesterday was a little on the stale side. Here's play. That's what Bob Shapiro said. Here's Plantation. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, sir. Hey, I, I, I faxed you last night because I'm going to be at the Panthers game tonight, and usually during the daytime, you know, I, I lay tile and marble, and it's real hard to call you. But You lay I'm pipe on. during the daytime? Yeah. Yeah, I lay pipe in the daytime also. But, I believe it. But besides that, tonight <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come by and check you out at the game, you know, because yeah. I've been wanting to come to the game and see you, and, I, and I'm a loyal listener. You know, I'm only 23, but I... I listen to you every day at work, and I just think your show is the greatest. And it you is. need to wake this city up, man. That's right. They need a goddamn enema is what they need. They need more than They need enema. a blueberry enema. They, they would know definitely if that came around for them all because they, they need something. They, they need, need somebody to squeeze their bag tight, hard, and fast. <laughs> There's nothing like tight, hard, and fast, believe me. You know, and I'm going to come tonight, and I'm going I'm to come say hello to you with my girlfriend. And, uh, Excellente. We're going to uh, be very rooty, you know, show Florida what it's all about at the game. All right. All right, so you have a good day. And see you tonight. Yep. Go Panthers. Go Panthers. And see ya. We have an open line in Broward, 5-2-4. Okay, here's your starting lineup on left wing, number 29, Johan Garpenlov. Whoop! come on, let's give him a big greeting. This is his, uh, oh, it's not his first. He played in one, didn't he play in one game uh, the other day? I think he did. In the Ottawa game, that's right. That was his first home game, the Ottawa game. This guy's a player, this uh, number 29. Keep your eye on your hand, baby. Garpenlov, he's a Swede who sounds like a Russian. So if you want to find out about his ancestry before you decide if you like him or not, See, that's one thing in this town. All the other hockey towns, they got all these uh, Swedes and uh, Finns and uh, Czechs and Ruskies and everything. No problem. Except in Montreal, of course, where they just have the French and the English and they hate each other already. But uh, here, oh, when are we going to get some Cuban uh, hockey players? That'll bring out that crowd. Where's Benito? 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 That's what it's all about here. All those people that were coming out to those Marlin games, won't it be interesting to see if they could just get a whole bunch of guys with uh, foreign last names? See, there we get started on that again. Well, I just want to see how much it takes to prod these assholes. Because we've got this gigantic Cuban closet audience, and man, they are comatose. They're out there, but they don't want to admit it, especially on this show. Here's Weston. Hello. Neil. Yes, ma'am. How you doing today? Okay. Um, I wanted to call you and tell you it's the first time I've seen your commercial. I think it's great. 
What, that, that TV spot? That little spot. Oh, that's crap. That's from though. last year. It's leftovers. Yeah, but I, I mean, I haven't seen it. I don't watch 33 or 39. My kids are watching it, and I just popped on, and I seen you. I thought it looked good. Yeah. I wanted to tell you, my kids are into this game, Pog. Have you heard of it, Pog? No, I have not. Okay, it's a... It's a game where they're milk caps, and you stack them up, and you take these real thick, round brass things called slammers, and yeah. you hit them, and whatever flips over, face up, is yours to keep. Well, anyway. Now, how old are your kids? 45? <laughs> no, they're six and seven. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the best part. I send my kid off with $5. He needs a new slammer. So he goes to the store, and he comes back with this brass slammer, and it looks funny. It's all engraved. So I said, let me see that. It's the slammer? Okay. I thought he was on QAM in the afternoon, the slammer. <laughs> No, is in, that where he's hanging out? Embossed on this thing is OJ in the slammer. All right. Oh, oh. now I'm into it. I'm going to go home and play that this afternoon. <laughs> on one side of the coin, it's him behind bars saying guilty, and on the other side, it's him in the high speed chase in the Bronco. I loves it. So my kids I well, kill don't know what this is, but I said that's a good slammer. It's just when you lie. My favorite. Don't lose that. It's going to be worth some serious bucks after they uh, gas his ass. I think. So, okay. Well, listen, Neil. Yes. I got you down. Okay. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm breathless. I feel like Jerry Lee Lewis. Maybe I can marry my niece. That guy wants me to make babies. I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you, pal. That asshole I called yesterday. When Hank Goldberg gets married and starts making babies, I'll do it on the same day. How do you like that? I'll show you what a real man's all about. It's 1134 at WIOD. 10 WIOD. Was it as good for you as it was for us? I got you down. Oh, tiptoe through air and sex show. Cause she'll hang up the phone if you're too risky. So tiptoe through the sex show with me. I got you there. I love it. Okay, 1138 at WIOD, 22 till noon, about a half an hour, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 55, maybe an hour. Mark Furman takes the stand again. And I'm just kind of debating. Maybe we should just put it on cold and just leave it on all afternoon, huh? Zika, Zika. Or maybe not. Here's a fax from um, somebody. I love the ones where they don't put any name on it, but I'll be at the uh, game. But anyway, uh, what section do you sit in, and where will you be, and can I take a look at it, and how big is it? P.S. Did you hear the good news? This is the best news of ever. All you French Canadians who are listening out there, get ready. Just like Jackie Gleason would say, you're going to the moon, baby. Frogs can reproduce in uh, outer space. So all the frogs are going in outer space. We're putting them in a gigantic time capsule and sending them into space. And guess what? The air is free. Where the hell is that damn thing? Are we never going to find that? That uh, honeymooners thing? That Jackie Gleason with the uh, bobbit? God damn. Everything, as soon as we find it, they take it away from us again. Let's do uh, Miami. Hello? Hey, Neil. This is a uh, young Cuban uh, Neely in Miami. All right. Uh, a miracle! Out of the closet, baby, and into the streets. By the way, that lady, that German lady, sounded kind of sexy. I wanted to see if George had traced her uh, phone number to give her a call. Yeah, she said she likes cheese. <laughs> hey, Neil, I wanted to talk about uh, Mark Furman's testimony yesterday. Yes, sir. Um, the reason why he needed to lie a little bit was because they were supposed to be there for a notification, not for... Um, investigation. Investigation. Or palpitation or masturbation, <laughs> right. <laughs> because... They jumped the fence because after he saw the blood, uh, they thought that there might be a victim inside, and they didn't w wait for the search warrant. So, uh, right. Um, uh, it, it's also interesting that he he, ju he just went around the corner to look at the uh, at the other gate, but the, the the speck of blood was on the street side of the uh, of, of the uh, Bronco, so yeah. he had to be in the street um, to see that side of the Bronco. But still, I, they're just lying about uh, procedural uh, investigating uh, pro policy rather than guilt. I, yeah. I think uh, O.J. is guilty to begin with. So. Guilty as hell. Uh, but he'll walk. 
Uh, he will walk. So what's everybody you. worried about? See, everybody, we know he's guilty, number one, and all the people who want to apologize for him and making excuses, even though the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, keep in mind, they haven't even come close to getting to the blood evidence yet to the DNA and the RNA and the SPCA. They haven't even come close to that. that that's, that's right, but I, I have a feeling that that jury is just... Uh, if they say that uh, Superman uh, committed the murders and flew out of there, that's why he didn't leave uh, any uh, footprints, uh, they'd say, you see, that's it. That's, that's the reason it was Superman, and uh, he's not guilty. So, whatever. I think Clark Kent was there on the night. <laughs> that's what Marianne Gertrude said. <laughs> All right, Neil. Have a great day, amigo. Hasta que me olvides. Okay, bro. See ya. We have an open line in date, 751-9463. There was a young spick right there, man. There was a good guy right there on the phone who comes out of the closet, isn't embarrassed like Jose. Where is Jose? God, if I could find Jose right now, my next two and a half hours here could be so much more pleasant. And that's why I'll never find him or hear from him again. Let's do another thing at Pizza Loft tonight and invite Jose to come by. We'll screw the hockey game. Here's the North Miami Beach. Hello? On the purple line? Is gone. North Miami Beach on a purple line is gone. Well, shame on you, man. Purple line is open at Pound IOD. Let's do Miami. Hello? Hello? Goodbye. Two open lines a day. It's 751. Are you talking to these people? Are you finding out if they're there and they're there and they're gone and they're here and they're uh, tomorrow? Okay, whatever you say. Here's a lady in Miami Lakes. Hello? A lady in Miami Lakes. Hello. Hello, Neil. It would help if this equipment in here worked, too, but you got to punch it and punch it and punch it and yank it and <laughs> twist it. How you doing? Hi, Neil. First yes, ma'am. First time caller. All right. All right. Enjoy your show. I listen to you every day. I just wanted to uh, verify with you. I believe you don't know me, but I think you know my son. Yeah. Uh, Michael DiCello. He was with Midway Airlines. Oh, sure. Yeah. He's with, is he still with Alitalia? He went with Alitalia, yes, sir. Right. And uh, we're going to Florence next Monday. Well, my how come he never gets me any uh, free free uh, <laughs> plane trips to Italy? What are well, you laughing about? Well, you'll have to, to call him, He's Neil. a big shot with Alitalia. If I could tell you how much money I spend with him every year to go across to Italy, well, what, what a can small he do? fortune. Well, try him again and see what he can do for yeah, you. Yeah, let's get with it, Mike. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we've been to Italy before, but we haven't been in a few years. So we're going to Florence for 10 days. When are you going? Uh, we're leaving next Monday. Oh, my God. You'll have to give me a spy report. Let me know how it is. All right. I sure will. Enjoy your show, and uh, happy belated anniversary. And thanks to Pyle. All right. And thanks. have a great time. Thank you. And don't eat too much uh, too much of that uh, risotto. It's very heavy. <laughs> Stick All with right. the pasta. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. We have two open lines a day at 751 and one on the purple pound line at pound IOD. All I had to do was mention OJ and Mark Furman, and right away they start getting nervous because it's getting close to noontime. They're starting to rearrange their lives now. And as I was saying to Rick this morning, you know, I keep blaming the women, which we have very few women callers anyway on a whole radio station. So what is the logic in that? There ain't none. I keep saying, well, it's the women into this OJ thing. If it's only the women, then how come 95% of our callers are male and they're all disappearing too every time? Like yesterday, it was weak, okay? It was a bad Monday for everybody here, but it was really weak as soon as the goddamn uh, F. Lee Bailey started cross-examining Mark Furman. You, you can just watch the phone and see what these people are doing. So don't lie to me and tell me that you don't care and you're not watching it. You're watching every goddamn second of it. Your whole life revol revolves around it. This is another closet pastime in America. It's not just that Greg and Andy up there are doing each other up there in uh, Bonaventure or wherever the hell it is. That they're in the closet right now doing each other, playing a little grab ass with their radio cranked up real loud, getting sexual excitement from the good vibrations. That's not bad enough. But we have all these closet OJ watchers. And when you get the small dish, by the way, you'll be in heaven. Because it's on Court TV, it's on CNN, it's on E, it's on A, it's on I, it's on O, it's on U, it's, it's on like a half a dozen different channels constantly. So when CNN goes to commercial, have no fear, just slip down from 202 to 203. Next channel over, there's Court TV. And you get to see Fred Graham with his white hair at no extra charge. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Neil, uh, two thoughts. Uh, what did you think about that uh, Kaya Yocho? First of all, the, the crowd, they were saying, was like a million and a half. Uh, I, was, I wasn't invited, so I didn't go there. No, but here's, here's the, the thing that I thought was most amazing. This is that there was like one girl got cracked on the head with a bottle. Somebody was throwing it. Yeah. And there was like 37 arrests, which to me is like an incredibly low number, considering all the Budweiser that was sloshing around. That's there. right. Well, you're dealing with some very civilized people. Well, I don't know that, that part of it, but you yeah. know, the, the other part... When they get pissed off, they just, you know, dro drop a bomb somewhere, that's all. They don't go around shooting people. Yeah, well, I I'm just saying that uh, that number of people, okay... A little pipe bomb here and there, like maybe in your mailbox, you know. <laughs> the, the other thing is, is that, have you uh, any comments on 
what the state has got uh, with their sentencing guidelines, that they've just reduced some of these things. Um, like, pretty incredible. Like, uh, if you have one second, a person convicted of grand theft with six prior felony convictions, including aggravated assault, yeah. battery, okay, one year, county jail maximum. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? What's my thoughts on it? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to give you my thoughts on? What is there to think? Well, I mean... What, do you, what, do you, what kind of a question is I mean, that? What are my rapist, thoughts on that? A rapist convicted in three separate armed sexual batteries with yeah. armed kidnapping. He gets, what, a half, half an hour in there? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like... Incredible. Well, they don't want him to endanger the other inmates. I think we have cut it as close to the bone as we possibly can. There you go. There's your governor, man. How about two counts of... How about free drugs for every politician? Sounds good to me. Well, even at that, okay. Check it out with Warren Sapp. <laughs> have a great day, Pally. Thanks. Just lock the door from the inside. We have an open line at Brian. He wants me to try to rationalize what's going on out there. I'm not going to do it. It's, it's, it's sick. It's sick. I say lock Newt Gingrich up is what I say. Oh. Make us free for all time. Lock up Newt Gingrich, Strom Thurmond, Jesse Helms, William Dannemeyer, and, of course, that goddamn Pete Wilson, the governor of California, has turned out to be the biggest racist, fascist, uh, bigoted pig in the history of mankind. There's a real good one for you, man. They always talk about how liberal and radical California is. See, California is a mix of the far right and the far left and those who are all confused in between and those who don't give a crap because they're too busy uh, fighting gang wars. But God almighty, this Pete Wilson, he's moving so far to the right, he's making Pat Buchanan look gay and Jewish. Oh, that'll take away Rick's vote, I guess. It's 1147 at WIOD. 610 WIOD. That drunk and stupid is no way to go through life. Okay, it's 11.50 at WIOD, so I just discovered something in the DCS here, which was for Christmas that we never played, and because we haven't heard Guitar Man in so long... Just hear those ATMs ringing and giving me money, Yahoo! And it'll kill a minute anyway. Come on, it's lovely weather to go bankrupt together with you. Yeah, but wait, yeah, but wait a second. Charge it up, charge it up, charge it up, yo ho! Let's jump in the hole. What is it? To the tune of 20% or so. That's what Greg said to Andy. Let's jump in the hole. Charge it up, charge it up to 20 grand. Now check out my plan. Oh! I'm writing a book and it looks like chapter 13 again. I'd love to hit the lottery, but I'm an unlucky old schmoo. So I guess it's lovely weather to go bankrupt together with you, you, you. And you. Beautiful. See, it's well done. It's not a good bit, but it's well done. I figure we ought to play it once and then get it out of there. Here's uh, Sunrise. Hello. Uh, Neil. Yes, sir. The OJ defense. Yes. They had to purchase Gertrude. Is that a good one? or? Uh... Hi, this is Mike. We have an open line, and, uh, you know, this uh, block off the old ship, man. Somebody's got to come over and just beat the bleat you, bleat you bloody, baby. What an asshole. And your wife, she's also an asshole. How do you like that? I usually don't call women assholes, but in your case, I'll make an exception. A lovely asshole, but nonetheless. Isn't that what they said when Aaron started to hear something about a lovely asshole? I'm not sure what uh, Steve Nichols... My, my, my. Look out now. Here's a medley. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Tremendous. First time caller. All right. Don't get a chance to call you much, but uh, or don't get it Well, we're time. changing that, man. We're getting these people out of the weed work today, man. Yeah, see, I, I drive trucks for a living, and I'm up and down the road all day, and you're the one who helps me get through, so keep up the good work. Thanks, uh, Pile, Pally. All right, have a good day. You too. Mm -hmm. Open line at mm -hmm. open line at date seven five one. By the way, our guest in the uh, noon hour because we're up against that whole OJ business. Uh, we have to have something really inspiring on J. Ro Keach, the public address announcer at Mark Light Stadium, and also of course for the Marlins at JRS, uh, who has spent many many years doing hurricane sports. Jay is going to be on with us, telling us the real stories, talking about drugs of uh, drug deals and drug use, and I mean over the years with the baseball and football programs, it's going to be a real uh, eye popper. Don't say popper around Jay. Here's Boca. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. It's your Italian ice pies on. How you doing today? Uh, yeah. How you doing? Great. Neil, me and, Chronic. The, me and the roommate were thinking about getting this. Well, what is this, me and the roommate? Do we have any guys out there who don't have a male roommate? Well, you know, got to do it. We're thinking about getting you gotta the DSS. You got to do it? We're thinking about getting the DSS. Do it. Yeah, I'll, Do it. You know. It'll keep you busy. You won't be calling the show so much. It'll give you something to do. Yeah, we, we, you know. You'll love it. We wanted to see if we can get Muhammad's number. Yeah. And, you know, maybe you could hook us up. 
Maybe he can hook you up. Mm -hmm. Okay, hang on. George will give it to you. Thanks Don't do this lot, again. Yeah. Okay, you're going to be at the, the hockey? Game. Going to be at the game tonight? You know it. Damn it. Okay, hang on. <laughs> okay, he's on eight, the Italian ice man, that par paisan who just won't go away no matter what I say. Oh, man. We have an open line in day. It's 751 -9463. Chronic is the word. But, hey, we don't care. We're on top of it. Here's Carl Springs. Hello. Hey, Neil. What did you do? Just hang up on him? First time caller, Neil. I gave him the number. That was quick. That's what my wife says. Okay, yes? Neil. Yes, I am. How you doing? Good. Okay, I'm homesick today, so I find Good. I mean, well, not good, you. but good for me, yeah. Right. Well, anyways, I'm a New York Jew. Yeah. And my mom, she had married... Oi! <laughs> She had married a French Canadian. Yeah. And she told him. Why don't you go back to New York, you wop bastard? <laughs> so you can imagine what my mom told him when it was over. But, anyways, I just want to say I love your show. And I think you're number one. Yes, I am. You I'm sure number one are. with no callers, man. I'm I number one. I'm the most popular guy in town, but everybody stays a safe distance away. I saw you at the Broward Mall. I bought one of your CDs. Yeah. I play it all the time. I at the Broward Mall? Yeah, you were at the Broward Mall. It was quite a few months ago. You at were... the Broward Mall? Right. You had that big cake there. It was. Oh, you mean at the Macy's Mall? The, the fashion mall. Yeah, the mall. Macy's Mall. Yeah, that ain't the Broward Mall. Don't get those people psychotic. I'm sorry. But anyways... So are they. But anyways, I just want to... Could I call somebody a douchebag? Yeah. Mel from KTV, you're a big, fat, smelly douchebag. Okay. Have a good day. See ya. Bye-bye. Open line at Broward, 524-9463, Now, George was saying to me, he says, well, every line on the board is lit up, but it'll be real interesting to see once we get past the new news and they think that this OJ crap is going to start again. It'll be real interesting to see just how the excitement and activity level keeps up on this goddamn show today. And I think he may have a point. You know what? Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Neil. Yes, sir. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, that DSS, you got that? Yeah, I got it. Uh, it brings the international uh, channel to just uh, U.S.? Uh, from Uranus. No, really? No, not uh, out of, what do you mean, international channels? No, just from U.S. Just from U.S.? Just from us, yeah. Uh, it's good? It's great. How long do you have to wait before they come out there? What, what do you mean before they come out there? Uh, Is this uh, Mohammed calling, looking to get another plug for yourself? No, no, no plug. <laughs> hey, wait. Don't you have to order it, and they ain't gonna get a bunch list so they can install it. Couple of it? days, couple of days. That's you call it? up uh, my paisan, he'll come out there and stick it for you. Oh, you gotta get that number then. All right, hold on. Okay, there's another one from Mohammed. We're gonna have more goddamn dishes installed here than uh, they got in the White House dining room. I'll tell you that right now. Open line and a green line. One eight hundred nine. W I O D. Hey, uh, uh, George. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, George? Pretty good. Is, is Neil around? He's around. About this big around. Uh, put him on. Okay. Hello? George, put Neil on. This is Neil. Quit it, George. This is Neil, sir. This is he. This is Funny, I. George. This is it. George has given that other guy that number, so I picked you up cold. Sir. I like your house, Neil. You like it? You want to buy it? I didn't see any for sale sign. Not yet, but hey, you got the right, you can just write me out a check. Great new restaurant in your area. Okay. Pebbles. What is it? Pebbles. Pebbles? Uh, Where is it? Uh, Pine Island and Cleary. Right. And Pine uh, Island and Cleary. Okay. You'll like it. I think it's. I think. I think it's up your alley. I think you'll like it. What kind of food? Uh, I would say um, continental, but a lot of really interesting things on the menu. You mean like and a fancy restaurant? It pebbles with a name fancy. like that. It sounds like uh, you know Bam Bam is next door or something. It's not, yeah. No, it does. It's very, no Bam Bam. It's, it's nice atmosphere. Very tastefully done. It's. It's got really? a lot of. Pine well, Island and Cleary. Wait a minute. Pine Island and Cleary? Yeah. On the, uh, on the southeast side of the corner. I'll be damned. I never saw it. It's kind of hit. Uh, you could drive right past it and never see it. Okay, I'll search for it. But it's, uh, and the restaurant, too. Yeah, it's not too far. Okay. All right, buddy. Thanks. Okay, I'll search for it. Okay, he's got that radio cranked up in a hurry, man. That guy probably uh, owns the place. We have an open line at Broward, 524-9463. 524, we have one on the green line, man. We're not sustaining this tremendous uh, momentum. I can just feel it. I'm telling you, when the new news comes, how's our thing doing? See, you're getting uh, premature in your evaluation. Now, they're not even batting that thing back and forth on AP Audio. So just relax. When Mark Furman gets on there, when he puts on his hip boots today and his swastika and tilts his arm up in here, I'll be the first one to let you know. And we can get that bitch from Germany to call us back that called before that started all this trouble, whatever it is. Here's Boynton Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hi, I was listening to your show today, and, and it's great. It I is. couldn't agree with you more about Deion Sanders and Warren Sapp and 
most of the things that you say. Why don't these guys cut this crap out, man? They're the worst role models, and they make people Absolutely. And people are laughing at them. They are laughing at them. And I don't care if they're laughing all the way to the bank. These guys are crap. They're crap on legs. Well, they glamorize them on TV, and then they glamorize exactly. themselves. That's right, just like they're glamorizing this damn O.J. thing. Everything that's sick and twisted and disgusting, they glamorize, and then everybody wants to be just like them. Well, it comes down to this. If anyone's not getting a fair trial, it's the state, because these lawyers keep pulling more and more crap over on people, and uh, he's probably going to walk, which is really sad. Yeah. Um, I overheard... Well, goes to show you, if you have $10 million bucks, you can go out and kill a few people, too. And get away with it. Uh, while I was on hold, I noticed you were mentioning uh, uh, Pete Wilson. Yeah. What specifically don't you like about him? The fact that he's breathing, that, that's for a good start. He is the most bigoted, the most racist, the most homophobic, the most right-wing, the most the biggest piece of turd I have ever seen in my life. He makes Ed Davis, who at least uh, saw, got... Ed Davis at least uh, came around a little bit. He got Barry Goldwater syndrome. Do you mean one... Proposition 187? Every, every, everything that he comes down with, man, is it comes from a bigot. All he does is appeal to bigotry. He's perfect for the Republican Party in the 90s, man. He's just a full-fledged, card-carrying bigot. Do you disagree with Proposition 187? Yes, I do. Uh, why? In other words, these kids shouldn't get an education. What are they going to do? But they're they're just... illegals, Neil. They don't belong in the country. They... You know something? I don't, I don't agree with our whole immigration policy, but that's a federal thing. The state hasn't got a right to just say, well, we're just uh, screw these people, and we're just going to ignore them, and they uh, then they can go out. Right then we can have like 500 more gangs all over California. That's the way to solve the problem. They should cart them right over the fence. That's what they should do. They don't belong. Just like in Florida, we have the same exact problem. Cart them over the fence. Our tax dollars are paying for illegal immigrants to get free hospital care, education, yeah. so forth, which most working people can't afford themselves. Something wrong with that. Yeah. And? So you disagree with that? Disagree with what? I just got through saying the immigration policy sucks. It's a joke. And what are you going to do? Make up your own immigration what, policy what would now? You do? What would you do? I would go to the news right now. So, we fire people. So what? News Talk and Entertainment Radio. 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. W-A-Y-N-E. Oh! S-U-C-K-S. News Talk and Entertainment Radio. 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. Yes! To talk with Neil, call 751-WIOD in Dane, 524-WIOD in Brown. Unbelievable. Outside the 305 area code, it's toll-free, 1-800-944-WIOD. Incredible. Cellular One customers can call Pound IOD at no charge. <laughs> now, the Neil Rogers Show on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610-WIOD. Today's show is brought to you by Sika. Sika! How many of you guys are going, oh, yeah. And now, back to our show. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. The Mexican national holiday. Some stations are giving away trips to Cancun. Some are giving away trips to Mexico City. But we're bringing Mexico to you. That's right. We're giving away Mexicans. Real live Mexicans. Ay, caramba. We'll be smuggling illegal aliens across the border in the wheel well of the station van. Then we'll give one to you. Imagine your own personal Mexican. They'll wash your car. Clean your house. Pick your crop. Anything you want. Because if they don't, you'll have them deported. Adios, amigo. Be the tenth caller when you hear this sound and win a Mexican. Members of this station and their families are not eligible to own Mexicans. Bathing and delousing of Mexicans is winner's responsibility. Station assumes no liability for infectious diseases carried by Mexicans. Celebrate Cinco de Mayo in your own home every day with your very own Mexican. People listening to win. Okay, so anyway, get back to that last caller who tried to get me into a big, serious political thing. Pete Wilson is a right-wing, obnoxious, fascist pig who represents the worst bigotry and hate that possibly exists anywhere in the world, even worse than Mark Furman and Wolf Blitzer. That's number one. And number two, and we had to go for the news because Jennifer was screaming, Yank it, baby! And when she says to yank it, you do it. And uh, the, the solution is very simple, and that is close the doors now. Let's start taking care of the people here at the risk of getting serious for 20 seconds. I've been saying it for the last 15 years. Just take care of the goddamn people who are here now. Okay, the American citizens, remember them? The people who are starving, the people who are sleeping out of the goddamn streets, the people who can't get their crap together. Let's start taking care of our people first and just close the door. No more banana boats, no more uh, flotillas, no more goddamn uh, rubber rafts, no more jumping over the fence in Tijuana. Get lost, okay? That's it. Very simple. But it ain't politically expedient. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing today? Pretty good, sir. 
Hey, I'm calling a couple things. Yes, I say close the doors. Let's keep close them. the damn door right now. See, keep them from coming here. Right. Uh, and next... if they get here, just send them back where they came no, from. Exactly. That's all. Just turn give them, them that nice, friendly message from South Florida. Go back where you came from. Exactly. Turn them around. Right. No, it's that other gentleman that called earlier. Uh, he said it was about a new restaurant called Pebbles up there on uh, Pine Island. Yeah. It's a great restaurant. You got to try it, but it's on Peter's, and it's been there for months. He's got his head up his butt. Yeah, I knew there was no restaurant on Pine Island in uh, Cleary. No, uh, it's on Peter's. Peter's in Pine Island? Yes, sir. Okay. It's great. You should well, he's try only, it out. he's only about uh, 10, 20 blocks off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More like 20, I guess. Yeah, that's true. All right, Neil, that's all I got. Uh, have a good day. And back to you. All right. See ya. Open line of day. So the guy that called before, probably the owner, and doesn't know where he is. That's the problem. Pebbles, Peters, and uh, Pine Island. Don't ring in. That's not too far from Il Molino, by the way. God, do I love Il Molino. Mamma mia, that's the good stuff, Il Molino. Also, I heard about a great Italian restaurant, the name of which I can't remember, but I'll tell you tomorrow. Over on Oakland and uh, Federal. It begins with a T. It's not uh, La Taver, uh, Taverina, because La Tavernet, of course, uh, is in limbo. But it's called uh, something. Real, authentic Italian. they got real Dagos in there, and the food is incredible to die for. And a, uh, It's a very, but I can't think of it. Somebody will call. Here's a mobile in Homestead. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Is this Neil? Yes, I am. Hey, uh, Neil, this is... Uh uh, I want to call this guy a douchebag. Okay, we'll go right ahead. We have an open line at day. It's 751. We got one on the green line, one 800 94 See, if you have a pair of balls, you don't have to call me to call somebody a douchebag. Go up to him, step right up into his puss, look him in the eye and say, Hey, you're a douchebag. Or pick up the phone and call him. Don't call me. Call, call him right now. Say, Hey, Schmeckel, you're a douchebag. And then slam the phone down like you're really pissed off. And then go put your red bandana on and go play for the Dolphins. Not... I'm telling you, man, you guys who think that uh, Neon Dion, primetime, coming to town, going to save the Dolphins' defense, that he's going to be the first and second and third coming. Now they took that schmata off. That's like uh, cutting off uh, Samson's hair. Same thing, man. Once they take the schmata off, Dion ain't crap. Oh, speaking of Dion, wait a minute. Do you know what I found back here? I found a really, really great thing back here. We might even give this away. I don't think so. we got to have this around because he might just come to Miami and be a big star here. He might just carry the Dolphins right to the Super Bowl, but I doubt it. All right. All right. That's what I said. Yeah. Must be the money, baby. Must be the money, honey. And that bad jewelry. Must be the money. It's got to be because I got people want to be my friend. Must be the money. Yank it, baby. with a bullet already. Nice going, Jennifer. Jennifer and Dion Primetime doing it together. A lot of people pay to watch that, I guarantee you. We'll find out who the big man in town is then. It's a 12 pound. I don't think he could handle her. She's too tough for him. 12 past noon at WIOD. At 610 WIOD. If we're offending you, call Johnny Cochran. My wiener doesn't whistle. I got you down. You've seen the trial on CNN. Now, the TV movie America's been waiting for. Ralph and Ellis Cramden star as John and Lorena Bobbitt in Love Hurts. I'm warning you, John. Don't push me too far. <laughs> That's a laugh, Lorena. I'm the king in this castle. The K-I-N-G, king. 
<laughs> I'm the one with the penis in this house. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm tired of talking. I had a hard day driving a bus. Now I'm going to take a nap, and I don't want to be disturbed. What was that? Oh, she cut my penis off! Hey, Johnny boy, uh, what's all the screaming in here? Oh, help me, Norton. She cut it off! Uh, cut you off from sex again, huh? I don't have anything to have sex with! You gotta get me to a hospital. Any hospital, hurry! Hey, Johnny boy, looking for you, that animal clinic was right down the street. Ah, uh, so you think I'm lucky, huh? You think I'm lucky, do you? Well, take a look at this, Norton. What's wrong with that? I think that elephant's trunk looks kind of cute down there. Oh, you do, huh? Hand me that Playboy. <coughs> hey, Johnny boy, want a peanut? I got you down. 1217 at WIOD, and uh, don't panic, okay? Mark Furman is nowhere to be found. Mark Furman, the German, is still doing the indoctrination rights. Would it be something if he swore Johnny and his conquering into the Nazi party? That would be cute. Here's a lady in Miami Springs. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I love you. Of course. Yes, 1986, I came to Miami. Yes? I've been in what and out of town. What a bad move that was. I beg your pardon? I said that was a bad move. Listen, been in and out of town. Been back two months? Yeah. Come in town, have to turn to you to get a gauge on what's going on. Right. Kind of depressing, ain't it? Well, you're doing it. I That's am. all I can say. You're important. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm from St. Louis, so go blues. How's okay. That? Good luck to you. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm a black woman, and I like hockey. Okay, well, good for you. Because they never, they, it's a stereotype. Like, we don't love hockey. Yeah, well, what is that all about? I hope we get a whole bunch of black folks come to the game tonight. Well, you know what? Jeff DeForest is going to give, be giving away dozens of tickets to black people on Sports Talk tonight. Are you serial? Yes, I am. Well, so be, I just be sure to be listening to... between 6 and 7.30. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. And can I say one other thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was a little bit upset. I didn't know what was going on uh, around the Super Bowl because I was back home. Yeah. But I understand that Barbara Streisand was up to sing. And that Nobby need a... She up to thing? No, she was going to sing at the uh, Super Bowl. Yeah. And Nobby Knees but got she, in. But she dressed up as Kathy Lee Gifford, though. Oh, God, give me yeah. a break, Neil. Mm -hmm. She has these knees when she sits. You can see the corpuscles. That's right. I hate her like poison. I killed Nicole. Okay. I love you, though, Neil. I'll tell Regis you said so. Yeah, yeah. Have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. See you at the hockey game, honey. We have an open line at Dade, 751-9463, 751-WIOD. Jeff DeForest in now after that great show on Friday night with the Defoe out of town with Vic Stouffer. One of the worst shows in the history of broadcasting. Of course, it's uh, not one of the best even when Defoe is here. But Oliver's Twist, down the stretch they come, and Oliver's Twist is hanging and puking and choking and gagging on the outside. That Vic Stouffer man, a man not with a bad personality, just a man with no personality. And where's my Hialeah passes, Mr. Hotshot? All these people that are going to do this, they're going to do that, they're going to come through for you, forget it, baby. How's our ping pong game coming? But again, we do not expect the session to begin for at least another 10 minutes. Yeah. So uh, please continue to monitor you. Oh, thank God for that. Good news. we got another 10 minutes. Here's uh, Hallandale. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Pretty good. First time caller. All right. Look, I was reading this book uh, about Alex Hawkins this weekend, and it had a thing here about uh, Shula. Yeah. It said uh, he had a good sense of humor and a great appreciation <laughs> for determined play. Yeah, a great sense of humor. Yeah, we well, need some help. Yeah, not, but that was before the lobotomy, though. That's not the best part of it. It says Shula was a guy who could laugh, and better still, he could laugh at himself. Thanks, honey. <laughs> yeah, right. I couldn't believe that when I... Goes uh, to show you what a little lobotomy will do for you. <laughs> Anyway, I seen you on TV the other day on the spot. Yeah. Pretty good. It looked like an older uh, older shot, though. You were saying, uh, you don't listen to IOD, uh, who gives a damn or who cares, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that like a... Uh, from a year and a half ago. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's ancient stuff. We're I not thought... going to spend the money to do a new spot, not this crowd. Yeah, I thought I saw that a while back. Well, yeah. that's all I got, Neil. We just hope enough time goes by that you forget about it. We hope you got, like, Shula's memory. <laughs> have a great day, pal. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. If we could all just have a great sense of humor like the coach, baby. We need some help. We'd be in good shape. So how's the O.J. doing? Okay, see, they're putting the tone on there. It means like in 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5, the uh, 10, the 15. He's just running back and forth, up and down it. It's 1221. Now, who's this guy that got on here? Who's this bald-headed geek with the glasses who looks like a real professor professorial uh, pseudo-intellectual jackass? Is this another one of these uh, experts? 
if he got into a big fight uh, with uh, Detective Furman. So in other words, it's going to be low-key, and F. Lee Bailey's going to pretend that he's a real gentleman instead of a sour, craggy old puss. 1221 at WIOD. 610 WIOD. The picture of modesty and decency. Love you, baby. Welcome to the game show that has all America voting. Wheel of Gingrich! Yeah! Now, here's your host, Pat Payback. Thank you, Johnny. Well, for those of you who don't know how to play, don't worry. We're changing all the rules. <laughs> uh, let's meet our first contestant. She's a welfare mom from Chicago. Hi there, Charnel. Hi. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> well, you should be. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead and give the Wheel of Gingrich a spin. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Too bad, Charnel. You landed on Give Up Your Child. <laughs> Get her out of here. <laughs> Let's meet contestant number two. Jim, uh, tell us a little about yourself. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm the head of a middle class family in Des Moines. Uh -huh. and, and, and can I spin the wheel of Gingrich? Oh, no, Jim. You're from the middle class. You've got to wait till everyone else here has a turn. <laughs> but you said that. <laughs> Never I... mind what we said. Uh, it's our game now and our wheel. Yeah. Our next contestant is a defense contractor who builds really big guns. Oh. Lamont, like to solve a puzzle? Actually, I'd just like to buy a Vol. Oh, great, Jim. This one's on you, right, buddy? Off it! Well, I thought... Oh, don't waste your time thinking, Jim. We'll do all that for you. All right. <laughs> Great. Oh, that's all the time we've got today. Join us tomorrow when we add two new spaces to the wheel we told you we'd never use. Social Security and Medicare. Ooh. I'm Pat Payback. Thanks for swallowing the... Wheel of and whatever you do, don't land on that treat your lesbian sister uh, square. It's 1225 at WIOD. We have an open line on the green line. How's OJ doing, baby? The game is on. Game on. There we go. Okay, won't be long now. About this long. Here's Westchester. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Good. Listen, I mentioned. I heard uh, you mentioned something about your dog getting out from underneath the fence this morning. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. I got a call last night about 3:30 in the morning, waking the dead in my house, and uh, telling me my dog is out in the middle of sunset. Of course, I live right on Sunset Drive. Nice. Yeah. Exactly. So I'd like I to put out. my dog out in the middle of sunset right in rush hour would be a good idea. Uh, well, you know, my first mistake was uh, going to chase after the dog. Here I am at 3.30 in the morning, no shirt, about 30 pounds overweight. Yeah. Couldn't find my shoes, chasing after this little dog that I couldn't find. So I uh, decided to go back and get my bicycle and look around for her. Well, after I couldn't find a dog for about uh, about an hour, I decided to return home. Well, I'm pu pulling my bike into the uh, gate. What do I find? A stupid little dog. Is inside, back inside the gate. Oh, yeah, they always do that. That's Ridiculous. what my dog does. Well, if, you, you if you just ignore him, if you chase him, he just keeps going. If you just ignore him and threaten to pay no attention, he comes running back. You just leave the door open, he runs back in the house. Well, you know, I was getting a little nervous. Once a dog gets about two or three blocks away, I figure the... You the know, only the time brain... I get nervous is when I see him coming back in the direction of the house. I get very nervous. Yeah, well, I figure their brains are, are so small that uh, once he gets two or three blocks away, he probably wouldn't find his way... Uh, back. No chance. But uh, if it wasn't for the kid, I'd tell you, I would have let that dog just run in the damn street, let him play, have a good time. If he lives, great. Well, and if not, uh, you pack him a sandwich, right? Yeah, exactly. I got there three, you go. You know, I got three more. Another thing... Uh, well, you know, the people that put your fences in, when I bought my house and I spent a lot of money to put a big, beautiful wooden fence in there, and they did, generally speaking, a pretty good job. However... They really, and I, you know, you tell them, I have, you, they can see you've got two dogs. One's a big one, which you don't have to worry about. One's a very tiny little dog that weighs about 10 pounds. You have to make sure that every one of those slats is down into the ground. Not, not uh, several inches above the ground, not an inch above the ground, but down flush, like right into the ground exactly. so the dog can't dig his way. And I'm going to tell you, every few months he finds another spot. I take boulders, I take rocks, I yep. take every damn thing that's ever been invented. And then a few months later he finds another goddamn spot where they did a crappy job. Sure. Well, I did that. You know, I went and I bought my, my bags of sand, and I put them all along the fence. And then the association, uh, Snapper Creek Association, decides they're going to dig a pipeline right behind my fence. Yeah, So they nice. dig this four-foot trench. When they fill it back in, they must have left ten new, new gaps of uh, holes where this dog can get out. Beautiful. So like you said, every time I fill one in, the dog gets out from, from another damn hole. Yeah. So what, I, what do I have to do now? I, get, I lock the damn small dogs since it's so small. I have to lock them up in the cat box. 
In the cat box. And, I'll and tell you a little about a half hour in a microwave is always a good idea. Not with it turned on necessarily, but just as kind of a warning. I don't think he'll do it again. Yeah, well, I, you know, I kind of got in prison, this damn dog. If I, if I leave him out and he doesn't get out, he barks all friggin' night. Yeah. Okay, well, good luck to you, pal. Okay, sir. Okay, back to you. We have an open line in date, 751, one in Broward, 524. All our uh, friends with their little doggy stories like me. It's one of those things, you know. It's one of the one of the problems of having a little dog. If you have a big dog, then uh, everybody looks at it and they're proud. If you have a little dog, people laugh at it. Here's uh, Boca. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes. Yeah, um, I, was t- I was thinking about uh, what you said about Pete Wilson and Mark Furman, how they're racist, right? I don't know that Mark Furman's a racist. That's well, alleged. That's Pete, Furman, Pete Furman, I know, th- I mean, uh, Pete Wilson... Well, what a Freudian slip that was. Pete Wilson is a racist and a bigot, and he appeals to all the worst. He's kind of like a Ronald uh, Reagan with the uh, memory. Well, it appears to me that, that you're racist because you call all these, you know, the Spigs, the Dagos, and all yeah, that. Yeah, right. I'm a racist because we're using that to make a point, sir. Are you too stupid to understand that? You're just a cork sucker. Yeah, you're just a cork hole, man. You cork liquor. We have an open line, and uh, you know who that is, by the way? That's uh, your buddy again. You know, just because we brought you guys out of the closet, I guarantee you that Greg and Andy are doing each other right now. Well, it's almost Wednesday. Tomorrow is hump day. Let's go to uh, Miami. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm an immigration attorney here in town. I just want to say I think all these people want to cut off... You're an immigration attorney? Yes. Yeah. I think all these people who want to cut off illegal aliens from benefits are morons. Yeah. Simply because I don't understand what they want... Why? Because that would put, they, they that, would put you on, that would put you out of business. Is that why? No, why don't you I go out and defend like real Americans no. and do something for people who are like uh, like OJ? Go out there and make some no, serious I money. Out, I think these people are outrageous. They're saying that they. Uh, what do you mean they're outrageous? What's wrong with taking care of your own people first? We can't take care of everybody in the goddamn world who's well, desperate. Should we bring in all the people here from Ethiopia and from Bosnia and Herzegovina well, and everywhere in the goddamn world where they're starving I'd and they're like killing to see each what other? These people think of the cost of labor going up in this town. What if we? Ever That's did right. Do Let's keep good aliens. cheap labor. Let's keep bringing in illegal aliens so lawyers like you, shysters, can keep making money defending them, and they can keep taking American people's jobs, I, I, and we can I keep exploiting right. people at what, slave labor. What, Get out of here, you creep. Just what we need is another goddamn lawyer. What was that, about a 12-year-old lawyer? He's a lawyer like I'm a damn brain surgeon. Go back to New York, you slimeball bastard. We have an open line in uh, Dade, 751, and one on the green line, 1-800-944. How's OJ doing? Oh, game off. Game off. It can't be long now, man. Can't be too far. So just stay tuned. We'll, we'll give you a good uh, lick of this, a good dose. Here's Lauderdale Lakes. Hello. Yeah, Neil. I just happened to um, be listening to your show, and then I had to get out of my car. But while I was listening on uh, um, hold here, I happened to think that there's uh, what's called an electric fence that you could get for a small dog like that because they do have a tendency to tunnel out. And it's like a, they put a special collar on the dog, and then it's a low, very low voltage wire that they bear. I want a high ground. voltage wire. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like your dog, I guess that would work. Anyway, um, the reason why I call is two, well, one thing that I wanted to tell you, another thing, they're trying to make, I think, uh, Don Shula a national celebrity at the uh, Riddick Bow fight Saturday night. They were showing Jack Nichols and, and, and a number of other uh, actors and celebrities, and then they also showed Don Shula. We need some know. help. So, you know, everybody got a big thrill out of seeing Don Shula. On oh, there. yeah. But the reason why I call Always it, sends a chill up my spine. Exactly. But it all depends on what direction that chill is going. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the reason why I call is just as I got out of the car, I heard you talking about California. And somebody had told me once that California is like a granola bar. If you take out all the fruits and nuts, all you've oh, got left is the flakes. That's older than, that's older than my great-great-grandmother. Well, maybe we got the some young listeners. And nuts. Maybe we got some young listeners out I there doubt it. heard it. I, I doubt it. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I've been to California, and you doesn't impress me any more than South Florida does. Oh, now you're dreaming there. You're dreaming. No, Vegas, California at least Vegas, has got some... Vegas, I agree with you. I absolutely no, love well, for, I'm not talking about living there, but just in terms of the people there, at least in California, you've got a few million people that have got an IQ bigger than their jock size. Florida, well, man, is just a bunch of uh, retards and... Um, Rubber rafters and uh, misfits. Well, I, about I, like I, maybe I maybe fifteen percent of the people in Florida got like some intelligence, and the rest of the people here are morons. I got to agree with you to the point. Where this 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 state is uh, this state is a thousand years behind the be, uh, behind the Stone Age. Maybe that's why I get along so well with people up north. 
Yeah, or maybe that's why you fit in so well here. We have an open line in Dade, 751, one in Broward, 524, one on the green line, one 800 See, they're dropping off now like flies. We have sustained a tremendous, a euphoric and incredible level of activity here on these phones today. Not too many good calls, but nonetheless. And then, of course, they're trying to suck me into getting into a serious thing about immigration and illegal aliens and Pete Davis and uh, Pete uh, Elliott and all this other crap. Jesus, God, and Joseph. They wouldn't know Pete Wilson from Marie Wilson, these people. How's O.J. doing? Okay, no, no cause to panic. Just stay calm. We'll tell you when to start screaming. Here's Kendall. Hello. Neil. Yes. This is an Argentinian, uh, Neely. Buenos dias. First, first time caller. How Buenos are you? Buenos uh, I wanted to tell you a little story about TCI of South Dade. Mm-hmm. They, uh, about uh, three months ago... I was having problems with a with a picture going out on my TV set. Why ain't that unusual? <laughs> yeah, right. And I kept trying to get in touch with uh, TCI to see what's going on. Forget it. You can't get through on their phones. Okay. That's the idea. They so, don't want to be bothered with all those complaint calls every time the picture goes out. Uh, get this. <clears throat> I don't pay the bill for one month. The second month I get the the bill. I don't pay that one either. Mm-hmm. And I get a phone call from, I guess, their collections department. And I said, come and get this crap. Good. Okay? Great. So half an hour later, they're at my door with a bill. Yeah. I said, I'll mail it in. I said, well, we got to have the box. I said, I'll mail that in, too. <laughs> and the guy is the, the guy's kind of is trying to intimidate me, you know. Says, really? Well, i got to have the box now. <laughs> I got a hundred pound Doberman, and I said to him, "Gunner, watch him." <laughs> Beauty. I'm trading in my minpin for a Doberman. That sounds good. Uh, you got a minpin too? Yeah. Oh, I got one too. Oh, no wonder you sound psychotic. <laughs> okay, that explains it. Okay, Pally. Let, right. let him have it. We have an open line in day. It's 751, one on the green line. That guy was really uh, tickling himself, wasn't he? It's uh, 1235. All you people that are pissed off at Continental and TCI and all these other crappy cable companies, go out and get a big, nasty dog, okay? Sounds like a real good idea to me. Or just get a nasty little one. I got one you can have. 1235 at WIOD. It's a stream of consciousness that knows not where it goes. As Sally Fitz would say... Take it up your ass. If your car's life is over, go see Ben Dover. You'll realize what you had was heinous when you hop in and ride your anus. Oh, yeah. You've enjoyed driving Mercury. You loved your Saturn. Now come and dig Uranus. Love that new car smell? Nothing smells like Uranus. Dependability? No one has ever got stuck in Uranus. Take the plunge now. Be courageous. Bend over and ride Uranus. And if you like a car that holds the road, you couldn't wipe out Uranus if you tried. Uranus. Powerful, yet great with gas. Need trunk space? Rest assured you can pack anything in Uranus. And if Uranus is rear-ended, our well-lubricated joints will soften the blow. Come to our showroom and pick out Uranus. And leave that messy paperwork to us. Check out Uranus. Take the dive like Greg Luganus. Bend over and ride Uranus. 1241 at WID. The trial be delayed today. They, uh, what the hell's going on with that? Nah, nothing going on. It's going to be real late. Maybe starting at 2 o'clock, Andy. You're in luck. No, see, the deal is now that, and I noticed that the uh, F. Lee Bailey keeps choreographing everything. They keep asking all these really uh, desperate questions, and then he says to the judge, oh, it's lunchtime, isn't it, Your Honor? It's uh, three, uh, whatever the hell it is. You know, it's break time. It's uh, time to say goodbye, right? Right, okay. Well, like yesterday, after he asked, he asked him, uh, how come you were asking uh, Cato for the keys to the Bronco? He said, I never asked him for the keys. Okay, it's uh, that time, Your Honor. Let's go home and let the jury think about that, about that lie. Speaking of having a good memory, let's test. Now, first of all, remember how, how they lie to you when they come in and they buy a station? And they say, oh, we're not going to change anything. Your job is safe. What was the guy's name? Don't tell me. Uh, give me a clue. Who was doing the morning show on Hot 105. And he, uh, when they came in, when this company bought Hot 105, they said, have no fear. You're safe with us. We love your show. And this and that. he did this. He left this. Young men running up and down courts. I love young men. Wearing really tight Molly. shorts, they're so sweaty. What a memory, man. When they jump well, when I heard how bad this was, Malo came to mind immediately. Have As in, Mui Malo. Hey, 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 it's time again for some gray NBA. Can't wait to watch them all play NBA. They're big and they're tall. Gonna watch them play ball. I'm 
So to make a long story short, they lied to him. Everybody in the building knew they were lying. They hated him like poison. They blew his ass out of here. Then they gave Rodney the morning show, who was doing real great, and they lied to him. And they said, hey, you're doing a great job, Rodney. And they, uh, they kicked his ass into, like, uh, doing some flunky thing and brought in Tom the Fly Jock Joiner, who has got to have one of the worst shows in the history of the human race. That is the most embarrassing show. I'm embarrassed for the people who listen to the Tom Joyner show, if there are any. The worst. So Malo, he's gone. And why the hell did I play that other than to kill like two minutes? That was a good idea. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You know, there's nothing I, I dislike more than you bitching and moaning about an open line, so I decided to do something about it and give you a call. We have an open line on the green line. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, listen, you know, I'm an attorney. And, yes. And uh, I stopped practicing probably two years ago. Because Practice makes perfect. That's right, because there's nothing I hate worse than, 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 than the feel the law in this town. And boy, did that guy sound like a jerk. Yeah. Ah. Uh, no, he's another, he's, not, he's yeah. another Ira Kurzban. He's another guy who's making a living forcing, foisting illegal aliens onto this country and uh, creating hardships for the American citizens. Absolutely. And all this money is going to pay them, and now they're yelling and screaming that they have to uh, get citizenship. Now they're running to get citizenship status and complaining, saying, well, we've been residents for 10, 20 years, and we've paid our taxes. Why do we have to become citizens? You know, as far as Ira Kurzban is concerned, I thought we just went through that whole business. We even sent uh, doddering Jimmy Carter over there to Haiti, and uh, we got uh, that goofball back into power. Well, how come everybody's not going back? Yeah. It's like all this crap about Fidel. If he leaves there tomorrow, do you really believe that most of the Cubans who are living here right now are going back? No way. No way, Jose, baby. No way. No way. Have a great day, pal. You too. See you. Congratulations on getting out. We have an open line in date. And by the way, congratulations to Greg and uh, Anna or Andy on their coming out today. That was very courageous of those two young men. Open line in date, 751. I wouldn't be surprised if they wind up on Jenny Jones pretty soon. Haven't had a single call about that Jenny Jones thing. And I've been telling you for, see, everything I tell you, sooner or later it comes true, more often than not. And nobody wants to say, God, you were absolutely right. We thought you were just blowing smoke again as usual. And then you turned out to be right again, just like with a baseball crab. For years I was telling you, oh, they're going to kill the goose that laid the golden uh, number, man. They're killing it. And I also said that uh, F. Lee Bailey is a doddering old fart. As 1993, 1893 police reports was born. were turned over as to that incident. There are no notes or other materials to turn over. Oh, the I jury. Have... See, th now this is all foreplay again. Good thing that CNN at least gives you a little uh, something on there. It says issues are being discussed without the jury in the courtroom. So when a jury gets in there, when we stick uh, Furman the uh, German back on the stand, then we'll start getting into this. But in the meantime, I'm not going to waste you with that, that awful terminal coma-inducing F. Lee Bailey. This man has been dead for 10 years, and nobody told him because he hasn't collected all that uh, drug money in Miami yet. Maybe he can defend Warren Thatt. Here's uh, Miami on a Fort Lauderdale, it is, whatever it is. Hello? Hey, Neil, what's up? How you doing, sir? This is one of your many thousands of African American listeners. All right. Hey, you all over the place, man. You on TV, Channel 4, 7, I'm everywhere, yeah. 10, 33, 39. Yep, 69. I haven't heard you in a long time. I would like to tell you at this time, um, happy belated anniversary. Well, thank you so much. And it's where have my, you been, man? It's my anniversary, too. It's been a year since I've been, um, I had, uh, been channel surfing last year, and I landed on you. And I'm still on you, so it's my anniversary, too. Well, happy anniversary, pal. Well, thank you. Yo, Neil, I came home and I heard you playing my boy, Dion. Yeah. On the CD. That's your boy? Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh. Let me get that CD then. What do you mean let you get that CD? You want that CD? Yeah. No chance, baby. We have an open line at Broward, 5249463. I was just joshing about that. You don't think we're giving up something that good as a uh, prime time, baby? What if he signs up with the Dolphins and then we don't have that thing to play all season long? Must be the money, must be the money. Spank it, baby. Must be the money. Yank it, baby. That's already number one with 75 bullets. I'd sure like to have prime time come in here between 8 and midnight and have the sex goddess of the evening look him right in the puss and say, I got you there. Here's Hiley on the purple line. Hello. Well, it's D.S. Hey, and back, back on you. Hey, Neil. Yes? I had a, I had a request, man. I'm, I, I've been wanting to call for a while and I had it. Do you still have the card in the Weaverism, the good old Rick Weaver? Do I have the card where he says that's one of my Weaverisms? <laughs> No, no, I think you called it the Weaverism. I don't know what the name of the card exactly was. That's uh, one of my Weaverisms. <laughs> we have a card called Weaverisms, George? 
No, man. It's, it's just it's a car with a combination of its classics. Oh no, well that's not a cart. That's something I have to put together here, which requires about ten seconds worth of effort on my part. <laughs> I know, I know, I've heard it before, but it's been a while. You want a medley, huh? It'd be nice. You're Jones in for him, huh? I'm Jonesy for him. I miss him, man. I miss him. He, he was an old fart, but he, he was he was a right to listen. He to. was an old fart that had a, a certain little, even though he was annoying and surly and disgusting. There was just a certain something about him. You couldn't put your finger on it, or it would get dirty and smell bad. But there was something about him that you liked. But with I, this I, I did, this I, Zimfer guy is as sterile as the inside he, of a goddamn he, uh, perfume a, box. I think he's related to Huffley Bailey. He's dead. He just doesn't know it either. Exactly. He's kind of he's kind of sterile. Okay, I'll put it together for you, Pally. Hey, I love you, man. You're hang the on, best. Hang on tight. Neil God. Bye bye. Bye. Get out of here. We have an open line on the purple line, pound IOD. We have one in date, seven five one, and uh, we're doing okay, man. I can't, I can't believe this because they're doing the preliminary little foreplay now. And he just, just as I open the pot, oh, here comes Marsha now. Look at that saying, zit. <clears throat> if we get a My mother says it's a answer, mole. We'll I'm telling you right now, it's a chirpy, to. baby. Uh, call them. That person God. is a witness. They reasonably anticipate Look calling. That. I mean, you they can't. Can one of those things you can't stop looking at. That thing on her lip is so big. Nonsensical it's allegations it's that they that they've brought out from it's, Kathleen it's Bell uh, and others uh, of her ilk. Her then ilk. it will be denied because it is indeed false, and they know that. And they should. That means they reasonably anticipate you know, calling. You know, when person. you come right down to it, this defense with all the money he's spending, they're doing a cr one crappy ass job. And they were saying yesterday, which is absolutely correct, sir, and ma'am, and anybody else, that when she does her closing statement to the jury in about 55 months, if we ever live that long, that she's going to, uh, they might even show the videotape of his opening statement where Johnny and his Cochran says, oh, yeah, well, there's this Rosa Lopez, and she saw this, and she was walking her dog, and she saw the time, and then there's this very interesting woman, Marianne Gertrude, and, of course, the fact is that they never got to hear or see either one of them. Because they both turned out to be deadbeats and the full of crap, and I'm sure she'll uh, lay that on in very heavy-duty terms. That's the defense, man. There ain't no defense. The alibi is he was uh, taking a nap. Oh, he wasn't taking a nap. He was batting some balls around. Ron Goldman's. He was batting some balls around. Right. He's arthritic. He can barely stand up. He could never have killed anybody, but he was uh, practicing his golf swing. I mean, this is the most pee-poor, I can't say pith-poor, if the the, the uh, pieth poor defense I've seen it seriously, they're making these uh, the prosecution look good, and these are a bunch of, of bumbling uh, dumb forks. These guys, they're pathetic. This uh, Sherry Lewis with the big schnoz there, man, she couldn't she couldn't uh, do a, a trouser in your pants. This bitch, I know you want to take the break, and you're getting very antsy about it, but I'm trying to stall and time this thing out between the time we hear Rick Weaver and Effie Bailey. And have you ever seen them together, by the way? 1250 at WIOD. At 610 WIOD, we treat the news stories of the day with all the respect they usually deserve. The Tamiami Strangler. He's no pretty boy. Good afternoon at 3 o'clock. I'm Jennifer Rem, 610 WIOD News. Concise, accurate, and ahead of all the rest. News, Talk, and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. 610 WIOD, where having a breakdown is an everyday thing. They took each other out like they were dancing. All they needed was a little music. Jim Mandich takes a snort or two after each game. If they had to blow the football up tonight in order to play with it, it'd probably explode in their face. Are we on the air? The fans beginning to blow the... Blow the uh, Boo the play selection. Are we on the air. That's a first down by the hair on their chinny chin chin. Cox, the heavyweight champion of the NFL. And the running backs are turning the cracks into big holes. God, that's embarrassing as to me. When he filed, finds that little crack, turns it into a hole every time. The ball popped out of there. I hate to use this, but it's uh, one of my weaverisms, like a wet watermelon seed. The ball popped out of there. I hate to use this, but it's uh, one of my weaverisms, like a wet watermelon seed. Man, that's just stupid, Rick. Yes! 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 I tell you that we ought to put that out on a, as a single. What do you think? Uh, no. Twelve fifty-five at WIOD. They're still hocking a chinic about uh, the scope of the uh, cross-examination of uh, German the Furman and all that stuff. Here's a mobile in Key Largo. Hello. Hey, there, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, I came down to the keys so I could hear Ron and Ron because it's not up in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, they're on in the keys. They're down in there. They come out of Key West. 
And you went all the way down there to well, uh, hear Ron I, and I Ron? Have, I, have my, I, have, I have my yacht down here, too, though. Oh, well, that's a better reason, I would think, yeah. Yeah, I had to put some hours on. I was out there in 8 to 10 foot waves yesterday, or day before yesterday, trying to catch some fish. Did all right. Well, that's good. And Think or thwim. What? I said, have a great day. We have an open line in Broward, 5249463. There's a rocket scientist who drove all the way down to the Key West so we get on his yacht and hear Ron and Ron. All right. Here's uh, Boynton. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I got something that you might want to use there. Uh, but it, it would be better if I could hear it, though. You sound like you're on uh, Uranus. No, I'm not there. But uh, you were looking for something for uh, that Nazi bitch to use. And I think I got a way for you to get around it. You could use an old Yakov Smirnoff bit and say something like, uh, what a country. Yeah, that's uh, got a pot. George just lifted his head up for the first time in about an hour and a half, so that uh, that got an attention, yeah. All right, not bad. All right, I'll talk to you later. Take care. See ya. Okay, hang on to it tight. Or as O.J. would say, this is mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't know what he said? This is mine. Something like that. He said, this is where uh, F. Lee Bailey comes from, and uh, this is mine. And it was something about his checkbook, I think. He was squeezing it real tight, and F. Lee was getting pissed off. Because he ain't getting paid for this anyway, F. Lee. And uh, Bob Shapiro wants to make sure that everybody knows that the token goy on the crew there, the token white goy, uh, he ain't getting paid for this. And quite frankly, his performance uh, speaks for itself. Here's Hialeah. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. First time caller. All right. Hey, listen, I was at TCI Cable in Hollywood. Yes. A whole bunch of people there bitching about the price, the quality. Yeah. About 10 feet away, they got little flyers for the new little dish, $39. Oh, that's for that Prime Star crab. Is it? Yeah. $39? Yeah. Well, yeah, but you don't own it. See, this is a deal that the cable companies are involved in this Prime Star thing. Mm -hmm. Is that available now? Um, I guess so. Are they peddling it? Yeah. God, I sure like to see one of those flyers if you can get a hold of one for me. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, you're wearing, uh... But you just mail it to me. All right. WYOD Miami 33141. Because that, see, this is a deal where they loan you, it's like a microwave, um, a micro, like a micro relay thing. Uh-huh. Where they microwave you the, why do I keep saying microwave? Well, that, that's correct, but it just sounds like my dog in the oven. It is correct. They microwave you the, uh, the signal and, uh, you don't own the equipment. In other words, they just put it in there. It's a three and a half foot dish. And the problem is that most people who can't have, like, a big dish, a six- or seven-foot dish, they're not also going to be able to have a three-and-a-half-foot dish. So what's the big deal? See, the DSS, the uh, direct TV thing, that's an 18-inch dish that nobody even sees, you know. Right. But I'd like to see the uh, thing. Oh, I'll send it to you. So send me your thing. All right. Okay. Later. Thanks. Later. We have an open line at Dade, 7511 on the green line. Yeah, this, these cable companies, they saw the handwriting on the wall. They knew that the uh, party's over, baby. No more crappy pictures. People are not going to continue paying for crappy service, for snow, for all kinds of garbage, and uh, for all kinds of outage to downtime when, uh, you know, they can have alternatives. So they got together, these cable, these grave robbers, TCI and Cox and all these other assholes, and they started this Prime Star bit. But I haven't seen any uh, tangible evidence that anybody has got it here yet, have they? This is probably like the DSS, the same thing. Remember how long that was? Oh, my God, we had all those verbal brawls on the air about it. It's coming, it's coming, it's not coming. I thought we were listening to damn passion phones. Is it coming or not, you know? And finally it got here, and it turned out to be one of the greatest things in history, and I went out and got mine. I'm going to say it again. I don't care whether you have my hammer. He doesn't give me no. He gives me like a, you know, a $5 discount, this guy. He's the cheapest Arab I've ever met. I got him like 85,000 jobs. He come, you know, it gives me a $2 discount. But nonetheless, he does do great work. But if you get it at Standard Brands or Brand Smart or anything, there's a jillion places. Everybody and their brother is peddling these and installing them now. And you really ought to check it out. Instead of just calling me and bellyaching or calling up the cable company, ah, oh, my picture's out again, you guys suck. And, and having to put up with the kind of the, with the food channel and all the other crap they give you and taking away your sports channel and all the other. And by the way, all the regional, not the sports channel yet, but that'll be in a matter of time. The regional channels like Pass from Detroit and uh, KBL and a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, uh, the one from the West Coast, uh, the, they had a Kings Leafs game on last night, whatever the hell that one is. Uh, they have like seven of those on there on your sports package when you have your small dish. So if it's movie, if you just want the basic thing, if you don't want any of that stuff for like 30 bucks a month, you'll pay less than you're paying for cable now, get a beautiful picture, and say, screw all you cable people. Better than electroshock therapy. News, talk, and entertainment radio. Okay. 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I think we have cut it as close to the bone as we possibly can. 
News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. To talk with Neil, call 751-WIOD in Dade, 524-WIOD in Broward. Outside the 305 area code, it's toll-free, 1-800-944-WIOD. And cellular one customers can call Pound IOD at no charge. You turn Now, The Neil Rogers Show on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Hey, buttheads, it's the one to two hour. Travel around town, don't you know, man? Those days weren't that great. We all lived through Watergate. Now, Carter, what a lame president, Jimmy Hopper. Wound up wearing cement, polyester. Was on every behind as we sat in real long gas lines. It makes me wonder just why. Seventies are gone, gone, bring them back. Big inflation was hot, our chief poster was rude. People speaking who found in the news. It makes me wonder just why are they back? I can't believe the stories they have come back. Around late at night, but those tunes made us feel all right. And now I understand why they are back. I'm gonna put it down, cause they are back. I put my dancing shoes on, hope I don't break my neck. Cause I can't take the one dead step. I try to put it down now. 108 at WIOD, all the rocket scientists, all the time, baby, and of course, uh, OJ. No coincidence, by the way, that it all happened around the same time. Because Kathleen Bell, Andrea Terry, Phil Coleman, and Max Cordoba all worked in the same He's area and knew each other. And so it's not a real surprise that they've all cooked up. I wonder if Fernando these stories. knew about that. Not at all. And what you he will see when they testify. Trust me, Your Honor, is going to be very different from what's been offered today. At some point, this gets cumulative and it gets ridiculous. We have Andrea Terry's statement that isn't even probative because it does not go to look the issue OJ. that looks, allowed uh, the, that made the court compel the court to, that's the word to uh, admit the Kathleen Bell bliss? statement. He is missing that probative value. That. Philip Coleman has nothing but hearsay probative my ass, and folded bitch. arms to offer, which is under 352 yeah, probe of no probative value whatsoever. See, and it's again. an ambiguous it, gesture at she best, wants to if badly. ever believed, that's how she by the way, which it will not be when all is said and done. And with respect to... Um, the statement by, uh, alleged by Max Cordoba, we have zero reliability to that. We have no statement, we have no notes, we have no take, we have Bailey, nothing. Mr. Hotshot, Mr. Multimillionaire, Mr. the most famous one in the world, he says, oh, well, I don't have any notes on that conversation because I don't ever take any notes. There is a man, there's your typical lawyer, man, and he says, as Marine to Marine, I'll get him up there on the stand, and I'll tell the truth, and he'll tell the truth, and yada, 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 yeah. Okay. Here's uh, Bonaventure. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. What is that thing on her lip? It's a chanker. <laughs> Listen, uh... It's uh, a chirpy. I want to talk to you about the, uh... A week ago Saturday at Pompano. I don't know if you already talked about it, but the, the big wreck at the finish line. No, I wasn't there. Did you see that? No, I was not there. Oh. I've taken a few days off. Yeah, big wreck, and, uh... I, th I believe it was, uh... Alban. Yeah. That flipped over the top of the horse, landed on the track, turned around and jumped right on the horse's head. Probably saved its life. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fabrics was telling me about that. Yeah, it was quite a quite Mark a Alban, the great horseman, man. He's the best out there. Make no mistake about it. We love Mark Alban. He's the finest horseman, the finest gentleman, a great driver. Mark Alban is a credit to our sport. Well, uh, they cart him away in the uh, ambulance. Yeah. He comes back and wins the next race. And that's what I heard. Never phased him. Uh, never bothered him once. Incredibly. Listen, my big problem is with the Panthers, though. Yes. I sit... I got season tickets. Don't forget Buffalo tonight. Buffalo and the Panthers be there at 7:30. Right. We got 1,500 tickets still unsold. I got season tickets right next to the press row, up, upper deck. Yeah. And 
on either side of the press row, they've blocked off one half of the aisle. You can only use one side because they don't want you walking next to the people who didn't pay to get into the game. Why not? I don't know. They got three, uh, mm, what, you know, a, arena security they don't want you up there, real, there. They don't want you close to the broadcast thing there because they don't want you saying, uh, Denise Potvin blows, stuff like that. <laughs> Well, like it's not even them. It's, it's, it's the newsprint it guys. It's the media guys and the and the players from the opposite team that are scratched. Well, I got news for you, man. It's the fans who pay their hard-earned money for those tickets. They're the ones that pay their damn salaries, not these media freeloaders that you're talking about. That's Absolutely right. And we, correct. And we can't use the aisle where we sit because uh, they got it blocked up. They got three people standing. Oh, you got to walk on this side because you don't you don't you don't want to get next to the media. That's a pile and of crap. Absolutely correct, sir. So, uh, you know, anything you could do to... Uh, I'm going to talk to that Rimmer tonight. I'm going <laughs> to see him before that game, and I'm going to tell him to get this straightened out or else. All right, and uh, hopefully we can get a win at home here. Okay, we need it bad, man. Let's Thanks, Let's Neil. play some offense tonight. Let's go out there and stick it in the net. See ya. Okay. Bye. And by the way, those of you who are like uh, Blade Runner Girl, of course, I guess this is Buffalo's first appearance here this year, I do believe. I, uh, am I right or am I wrong? I think so. And you want to check out number 17, Craig Simpson of the uh, Buffalo Sabres, and number 89, Alexander Mogilny. There's a couple of guys that she'd probably like to do two or three rounds with. Blade Runner Girl and Janet, who are busy right now, probably outside the arena, <laughs> sniffing around. Oh, I can, I can smell it. These guys are circumcised, honey. Don't get too nervous. You won't smell the cheese that far out. Are they circumcised or not? Twelve minutes after one at WIOD. Let me... Are they circumcised or not? 610 WIOD. Crude, offensive, or obscene? The staff and management of QAM apologize for their transgressions. But if I am guilty of anything, it is of giving all that I have, all that I have to give. My penis, my buttocks, my lower torso, thighs, and any other error that they wanted to help children all over the world. Femme Fatale Sharon Stone is doing a Western. And we mean really doing a Western. A fist full of booty. You're pretty. You're not. You're naked. You're not. Oh, damn. Fist full of booty. When you're at a showdown with Sharon Stone, you know you're going down with your boots off. <laughs> Did she carry 45? Well, <laughs> maybe not that big. They were downright perky. <laughs> She's a cool hand with a gun who really knows her Smith & Wesson. Are you Mr. Smith? Yep. Well, I brought the Wesson. Yeah! Mm. <laughs> Ooh, let me rip some on there. A fistful of booty starring Sharon Stone. It'll give new meaning to the term cowboy. Okay, I just saw Effley Bailey get up from his chair, which is quite an accomplishment. Uh, I'm reading their own Screaming their own report. and yelling well, and gesticulating and foaming draft. at the mouth. What does that mean? I mean, isn't that clear? When we write draft, we write incomplete, we write first version, same thing. It means there's a second version, first it means version. there's more. Or at least there are additional notes. Yeah, let's put Mr. McKinnon on the witness stand. I want him under oath. That sounds good. Nope, we're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, Ms. Clark, at least not at this point. The thing is, I've given you the opportunity to review the statement. I will not allow cross-examination as to Ms. Martin's statements unless and until you've had the opportunity to review this. I'll give you the opportunity to talk to uh, Mr. McKenna uh, to see if there are any other notes. And my, my recollection is that this is listed in the Discovery Index and with regards to the availability of notes and other things. So we can take that up later. I don't really... We've kept the jury waiting uh, yeah, for let's a considerable get down period to of time. Honey, my my preference would be here. to... Since I'm precluding cross-examination on that issue anyway at this point, why don't we proceed get with, with what we That's have? It. Move along, you little Jap. Okay, let's go to uh, Jupiter. Hello? Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I'd like to straighten out that caller from the Continental. The guy that went into Continental, and they saw the little flyers. It was TCI. Oh, uh, all he saw... Same difference. All he saw was, uh, they keep the TV book in there, and they have a flyer from National advertising $30, $39 a month for the... Prime buy the dish. Prime Star. That's all. It's, no, it's not the Prime Star. It's the DSS. It's not a... Oh, I see. 39 bucks a month. That That is uh, the uh, DSS, right. And, uh, well, why do they have that in there? They, they just keep the TV book in there because it's um, cableized. Oh, I see. So, in other words, they, uh, they probably don't even know that's in there. So, they don't have to print TV books for themselves. They just use Sun Sentinel TV books. Got it. And one more question about that. Do you uh, user were talking about a hockey game on the uh, dish last night? Right. All four of them. 
Aren't the uh, isn't that in the package? You got to that's separate than the sports. Yeah, channel. but I think it was only sixty nine bucks for the uh, you know for the shortened season. But uh, they don't have every game on, but they have like over two hundred games on. Oh, I understand, but it's and the right. picture is incredible, man. And I, like I said last night, there were four games played. They had every one of them on, and the channels are right next to each other, so you can flip back and forth and up and down, and in and out. No, I understand that, but you were saying on that sports channel package, they they black out those games just for your information. What do you mean they black out what games? You know those regional sports channels? No, they don't. The, uh, yeah, the, the professional games, they black them out in our area. In what area? And if, unless you're in the local area, they black those games out. No, they don't. I got the dish, Neil. You got the small dish? Yeah. I watched every one of those games last night. I don't know what you're talking about. There haven't been any games blacked out on that thing since I've had the dish. Well, uh, you, you might have given them a, a fake zip code or something. No, I did not. Look, Neil, I don't have to. You're getting me mad here. I'm getting you mad? <laughs> You're full of crap, man. Get out of here. What a liar. He must work for the cable company. I'm getting him mad because I'm telling the truth. There were no blackouts. There was a Prime uh, Network from Los Angeles. Had the Kings and the Leafs on at 7.30. Sunshine had the Tampa Bay game that got uh, zipped by Jim Carrey and the Capitals last night, 3-0. That was on air from Sunshine. They had the, um, ca the uh, Penguins and uh, Montreal game from KBL with Mike Lang. That was on there. And the fourth game was the Blackhawks and the Stars from the Dallas HSC from their uh, network. And there was none of them blacked out. And I don't give them any fake zip code or anything else. Why do people want to lie to you? Unless, of course, they are got something to do with a cable company. That guy pithed me off. I'll tell you that right now. I'm pithed off. Here's Sunrise on the Purple Line. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How the hell are you? Pretty good. Uh, I was trying to get a hold of you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what was the problem with uh, Ronnie's uh, helmet, Metamires? He's always uh, losing his helmet. What's his name? Robbie Netemeyer. Netemeyer? Well, I'm Cuban. Oh, I see. You know? Yeah. I mean, did you notice that? Robbie Netemeyer? I said a couple of uh, rows down from you. Yeah, he on likes, 125. He likes to keep it loose. You know, and the helmet, I, too. <laughs> Actually, he's getting a little uh, brave fighting. He's all starting these, to butch uh, up a little bit. He's playing a little bit better. Once once yeah. he uh, fills out into his body and grows up a little bit and butches up, he'll be all right. All he's right. coming around. We got we got like uh, you know. I still say Stu Barnes man is great. Stu Barnes to me is God on uh, skates. Well, let me tell you. And I his carpet love is uh, good. And uh, Gord Murphy and uh, Jody Hull and uh, and him. I predicted that uh, Stu it. was going to uh, score the winning goal uh, the other night. Yeah. When uh, when we were playing uh, the centers. Yeah. I knew that he was going to come through with us. All right. And uh, one more thing, Neil. Yes, sir. You play. Uh, you haven't played this one in a long time. Jack in the box. Jack in the box. Just played yeah. that the other day, but we'll play it again just well, to make you happy. Last week. Just to make you happy. Okay. Just calm All down right. and get a grip. Okay. Okay. Suck it easy. Okay. Suck it easy. That's what the Puerto Ricans always say. Suck it easy, man. Well. It's not always easy. Sometimes. It is so hard. Anyway, so how the... Oh, here's Mark Furman just sat down. Says is a racist who tried to frame Simpson for the murders of Goldman and ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson. He is? Okay, so anyway, we'll do our break. We'll come back, check a little Mark Furman. We'll check Jack in the Box. We'll check one of these 85 million calls. We'll do the whole deal here. The Gatsa Mishpocha, 122 at WIOD. 610 WIOD. People talk how people feel. Exactly. It is very hard. Hey, how the hell are you? Welcome to Jack in the Box. I'm Jack, and I'll be happy to fill your order, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'd like a Jack burger and a large fries. Sorry, pal, we're cleaning the grease fryer. We don't have any French fries today. Oh, okay, uh, then just give me a small order of fries, please. Look, Chief, maybe you didn't hear me. I said we don't have any fries today, so how about something else? Oh, okay, then uh, just give me an order of fries. <sighs> Listen up, pal. Who put the straw in strawberry? Nature did. That's right, nature did. Who put the ape in apricot? Uh, nature did. That's right, nature did. Now listen carefully. Who put the freak in french fries? Uh, there ain't no freak in french fries. That's what I've been trying to tell you, butt breath. There ain't no freak in french fries. Now get out of my sight before I shove your teeth so far down your throat. You'll have to sit on a jack burger to eat it. Oh. 
have a nice day. And back to you, 127 at WID. We have a call allegedly from Atlanta. Hello. Neil, how are you doing? Okay. Yeah, South Atlanta. Nice yeah. day up here. You what? It's a nice day up here. Yeah. Believe it or not. I believe you. Yeah, but uh, I'm sick and tired of listening to the OJ trial on uh, your sister station up here in Atlanta, so I no. thought I'd tune what in. What did you say? I said it looks like it could be similar to the one on Bundy. Yeah. I don't get enough of it, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Don't have a life. In other words, they're just playing the trial. What are they doing with it? They're uh, just uh, putting it, it on? Yeah, but, I mean, who are they going to interrupt? I mean, uh, Neil Bortz so, or some other right-wing commie that's on this station's up here. Yeah. So I don't know what's worse. I just, it's a pretty uh, bad station. I'll tell you that. For 50,000 watts in one of the major markets in the country, WSB is an embarrassment to the industry. Yeah, I and don't it's, know. And it's the flagship station of our, uh, our chain. The, uh, there's the... Uh, News breaks or something like that are halfway decent. Or the traffic, I guess. That's the the traffic, thing yeah. I listen to. We got crappy traffic. They got good traffic. Other than that, forget it. Yeah, but, you know, hell, I'd rather have some sunshine down there, to be there honest. There you go. A little cool breeze. Okay. How's the uh, Panthers been doing on the tenants? Panthers won okay? three in a row. The uh, tenants pretty good. We're selling out uh, most of the games. or close to it, and I think uh, we'll see. We'll see. We got three big games. We got Buffalo tonight, Islanders on Thursday, and, I mean, the Caps on Thursday, and who the hell is it on Saturday? Somebody. The uh, Flyers. Flyers. That's great. Yeah, I've been checking their tennis a little bit. And it seems yeah, we're like doing that. okay. We're getting there. Mm-hmm. Good. And one yeah. of these days, we might play a real game, too. It'll scare the hell out of you. Is Pamela Fontaine playing tonight? No, he's not. Okay. They said he might skate on Thursday. We don't. We got enough problems. We don't need him, okay? We mm-hmm. got enough problems dealing with McGilley and those guys. He was down in West Palm a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So my brother ran into him at the mall. We knew him from Michigan. So, And uh, to be first, perfectly honest with you, he's circumcised. Is he really? Yeah. Okay. That'll. Uh, well, you know, he's proud. Is he traveling with the team or not? Um, he has been traveling. He was down there doing some rehab work. So, in other words, if he was already down here, he's probably here right now. I just want the Blade Runner girl and Janet, her friend, who are two real jocks in the first, to know that Pat's down here and he is circumcised. Yeah. Well, you. So he's got Pat's plenty of brother. He's got time on his hands. Pat's okay, older pal. Is even better looking. Hang in there. Thanks a lot, pal. Have a great life. Bye. Okay, call from Atlanta. There's a real... That goes to show you. WSB, our sister station up there, is so boring that they're calling me from Atlanta just to have a little verbal intercourse because he's tired of hearing this crap. Same time, it would have been even worse. It would? Yes. Wouldn't you think the first four trips would be enough to blot out any footprints of a perpetrator, if any there were? I didn't see any evidence of any footprints. Well, you wouldn't see footprints in leaves, would you, detective? You know that takes an expert, don't you? I don't believe you... Sustain. Do you have some training? about what criminalists do. Yes, sir. Did you tell us yesterday you had taken a course wherein footprints of various kinds were discussed? There was not a specific course, but yes, it was mentioned. I said you took a course wherein footprints were discussed. He's getting discussed. testy now. Is that true? Testy. Uh, not just footprints, sir. That was part of a... a... I didn't say just footprints. <laughs> Here's a lady in North Miami Beach. Hello. Oh, it's about time, Neil. You know, I've been since February 1 trying to get you. You've been holding on since February the 1st? I'm the longest holder on her. Uh Uh-huh. It must be getting black and blue by now, yeah. Listen, sweetie pie. Yes, ma'am. In the Herald, there's a picture of a courtroom and everything in the courtroom, and, of course, the judge, and he's speaking. Listen what he says. The jury is instructed to ignore common sense, logic, justice, and the big picture, and consider only the minor and technical loopholes presented to you by these people who are paid to conceal the truth. Oy! Isn't that good? That's beautiful. I thought you would appreciate it. Honey, now you can't say that you don't get called since February 1, sweetie pie. Woo! Of what year? Of this year. Oh, of this year. Well, that's not so bad. My it's only March God, 14th. My Rochesterian doll. Okay. Okay, sweetheart. See you at the Zweigels. All right, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye wherever that is. See you at the Ragu plant. We have an open line in Dade, 751. We got one in Broward, 5249463. See you at Hickey Freeman. I think they're out of business. Here's uh, Miami. Hello. Miami. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. You know who this is? No. You know that possible my hangover? You know, Nipo Oh, all right. Frenchy. Yeah, it's me. I've, uh, I came back this weekend for my brother's wedding. You know that possible my hangover? You know, Nipo That's him. Yeah, I'm going back uh, It's tomorrow. a superstar. Excuse me? I say you're a superstar now. Oh, well, thanks to you. You are? I'm going back uh, tomorrow. To where? To Haiti. You're going to Haiti? You remember, I told you, I called you. I was well, I know you said that before, but I, w- I couldn't believe it then, and I can't believe it now. Why are you going there? For what? For work, business. There's money to be made down there. Bob, well, sure that. Were you going to sow some baseballs or something, or what? No, no, no. There's real business. There's like real what? Business. What do you do down there? Drugs? <laughs> no, not only that. There's a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, shipwrecking yards. There's a lot of stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, big businesses. Factories. Any of those Jamaicans down there with a the good weed? 
Excuse me? I said they're probably uh, having a good time down there now that they got uh, Baby and Papa Doc out of there. Yeah, and uh, we got the... the, the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got no comment on well, that. Well, I'm a little slow, you know. I've got no comment on that. That Aristide man, he never met a freight train he didn't uh, steal. Or something uh, like that. Or something like that. Right. So, well, listen, best of luck to you, pal. Uh, we'll keep your memory alive here forever. You'll always be a star. Thanks a lot, Neil. Okay, pal. Bye-bye. Good luck. How do you like that? That poor schlepper's going off to Haiti to make some big bucks. Should have that this Probably come back and buy us all out. Could have been used in those slang. What did he say? He never passed all that was it right? Could have, right. yes. No. Did you, you decide know, to CNN inquire is further break. as a detective to try to resolve the issue as to what it was and how it got there? At that point, I was just looking for a person that left it. Okay. Now, let's talk about the person that left it. Yeah. I'm sure that as you stood there, looking at an instrumentality of a brutal murder, whose scene you had just visited a short time before, I killed Nicole. You began to think about the nature of the person that might have had control and custody of that glove. Correct? Control and custody. How do you no. get custody of you a didn't. glove? No. You have to go to court for that? Well, did you think a victim, <laughs> some victim you oh, had probably have to interrupt now for the custody a hearing on a glove. ...scene of the crime and deposited it on O.J. Simpson's property. Sir, I had no knowledge of anything at that did point. Did you think that? No. Okay. Did you think that possibly someone who had been involved as a killer might have deposited that glove wittingly or unwittingly on Mr. Simpson's property? I did not think of any of these things at that time. You didn't think of any of these things? No. All right. Did you think that possibly whoever put that glove there, if it was put there, was somebody dangerous? Possibly. What training do you have about what to do when you sense danger? What's your first obligation? Oh, my God. I don't think yeah. I understand that. You don't? No. The safety of the officer, I believe you said yesterday, is a paramount consideration in police work. If you could phrase it like that, and my it's own safety. Warner Brothers, too. Okay, let's do a break here because this is really ponderous. And he's basically doing the same thing. He's browbeating him like he did yesterday and saying, how come you were out there for 15 minutes and you didn't draw your piece and you were, like, uh, just wandering around and matting up the uh, grass and the leaves and uh, all this. He's potchking around with the same stuff he was potchking with yesterday. And it's really ponderous, man. Two open lines in Dade and two in Broward. See what I mean about these people? We have been smoking here today. And I was about to congratulate the audience on their phenomenal comeback. Even some of the callers have had something almost interesting to say today. It's been almost a real goddamn radio show after yesterday. The worst, the most depressing day all day long on this radio station. We felt unloved and uncared. We felt like we had gone out of business yesterday. And all of a sudden today they make this big glorious comeback. And now that we got this uh, firm in the German on the stand and this old fart standing up there pretending to be a hotshot lawyer, which he was 40 years ago, now all of a sudden, well, uh, now we got other uh, fish to fry, baby. Open line in Dade, 751. And uh, two in Broward, two in Broward, 524. And if you're going to fry some fish, by the way. Get the honey, Junior. 135 at WYOD. 610 WYOD. Soon to be the unofficial radio station of the Miami Hurricanes. Why don't you go back to Canada, you Jew bastard? Why don't you go back to Cuba, you spick bastard? Why don't you go back to New York, you wop bastard? 22 till 2 at WIOD. So I go through my little spiel there, and as soon as I finish that, like half of the people around there drop off again. So who the hell are you kidding? Here's a, a note here. It says, please excuse the impersonal form of my communication with you, but I'm afraid if I called and my ex-husband heard my question, he would flip out. On April 7th, I'm heading to Las Vegas with 16 friends to get married. Was wondering if you could recommend a nice Italian restaurant out there that may not be so mainstream. P.S. Last week, the responses for the... Um Oh, I see. In other words, the call. What is that? P.S. The responses for the Teledyne shower massager were extremely lame. I wanted to call but was driving and know you hate pay phones. Any real woman should already have one installed in her shower. So here's another woman who's big into shower power. And she's going out to Vegas to get married on April the 7th. And wants to know a great Italian restaurant in Vegas. Let's get some call in George. He'll take it, okay? Call in George with a great Italian restaurant in Vegas. A great. What does she say? A great uh, that's not so mainstream, like off the beaten path. Like kind of beaten off. You, this the is an emergency, and we need to act now. Yes. 
Did you this not say want, that baby. to him Don't before lie to me. he this made is all any such statement to the you? The men, the women, the children, the old, the young, the infirm, the healthy, and did they're you not so sure. To be the they one want this crap. That hurdled the wall. Yes. Did you realize when you hurdled that wall that there might someday be a legal challenge to the propriety of your actions? No. Did you realize when you hurdled the wall that you were inexorably a part of this case for as long as it might last? I don't think I was thinking of any of those things, sir. Didn't occur to you? No. Okay. Had you run any numbers of cars out on the street other than the Bronco, or had they been run by someone to your knowledge? I might have run the uh, vehicle that was just east of the Ashford Gate. Mm -hmm. It might have been a, a foreign, foreign car. It might have been a 280 or a Celic. I'm not sure which it was. Okay. A Japanese car of some kind? I think so. What do you remember about it? I think it was dark colored and uh, quite cluttered in the interior. So you always playing up to the judge now, Japanese I, car of some kind. Now I'll probably go into a thing about how somewhat great remember, Japanese I think it was registered are. somewhere in uh, West Hollywood or Hollywood. Okay. And when you ran it through the computer, did it disgorge a name as the registered owner? I don't recall that. You remember hearing the name Brian Kalen before you ever went over the wall? No, I don't recall that, no. Okay. When you went over the wall and let the other officers in, you proceeded ultimately to Cato Kalen's room, correct? Yes. Did you hear any of the other detectives inquire of Mr. Kalen if he had seen Mr. Simpson that evening? I'm not sure if it was a uh, conversation to that effect. More like, do you know if Mr. Simpson's in the, in the house or the main house? But you did not hear any question about the whereabouts of Mr. Simpson as Mr. Kalen might be able to attest to it during the relevant period. No. When the others went to Arnell's room at Cato's suggestion, you stayed behind. Yes. No. This is something you decided to do on your own, huh? Yes. Did you go to the lead detective or any of them, since they were all your superior, and ask permission to interrogate Cato Taylor? No. Did you ask permission of any of them to test it with Mr. Black or Jordan? No. Did you ask permission of any of them to search his friends? No, sir. Now, when you began to talk to Caleb, you said you didn't know who he was. No. Do you represent that you didn't understand that it was his car parked outside the accident? No, I did not know that. Do you have a question about what an idea of an automobile? So you thought O.J. in prime time would never be on the same team? You're dreaming, Listen to baby. continuing coverage of the Simpson murder trial Don't from AP on Network on News. Press. So anyway, it's uh, 143 at WID. Did we get any Italian restaurants in Vegas? Did anybody call and respond to my plea? And the name of it is? What, is, what line is it on? Oh, it's Batista's. Baltista's. Oh, Baltista. Batista? What kind of a thing is that, you Cuban maniac? Fulgencio. It's called Baltista. That can't be the right name. I never heard of that. Right off the strip by the MGM Grand. Baltista. Okay, we'll get a whole bunch of them for her, no doubt. She's only not leaving till April the 7th. There's lots and lots of great Italiano restaurants, and not just the restaurants in the casinos either. There's a lot of good restaurants all over the place out there. Here's a Bonaventure. Hello. Neil, how you doing? Okay. Listen. Yeah. I sent you a fax earlier. About? Oh, uh, you know, about me and the guy that came out of the closet. Neil. Why are you calling me now? Is this Andy? Yes, it is. Why are you calling the show? Why are you guys pestering us? We I'm don't, not pestering what, we can't, you, Why don't you do each other all day? Neil, why don't you get, why don't you get busy? I just to... You're pestering us, no. mister. You're, you and your boyfriend are pestering us. Well, What's the matter? Can't you, find, can't you find uh, where the uh, thing, where the connections are? Is that the problem? <laughs> Neil. Why don't you read the facts the we way it's don't, We don't want to talk to you guys. You're a pain in the ass. Go back over to QAM, suck around with Hank and Joe on the, you know, pat you on the eyebrows, and get out of here. You're pests. Oh, no. Don't you know the difference between being like a real listener and being just a pest? Oh, little I'm kids pest. little kids are supposed to be okay. pests. If I'm a pest, what about that one guy about... You're a, forget about the other guys. You're a no. pest. You're a pest. Get out of here. Call up Orkin, man. 
Call up Phil the bug man to get rid of this goddamn pest. Oh, speaking of that, by the way, did Phil and the Scott get their act together on my... Because I got those dollar weeds out there. I got... I got... I could, like, sell those. I got so many of them now. My whole lawn is infested with goddamn dollar weeds. And I got these two uh, experts out there fighting with each other about, oh, who's the expert? One expert and one that thinks he is. And so they straighten it out. Yeah, one who thinks he is. Are you knocking Scott now, mister? Yes, I am. Why is that? Because you he doesn't have a certificate on his wall there. that says he knows how to spread poison. Yeah, but you do. Yeah. Just listen to your uh, comments. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Why don't you go back to Dusseldorf, you Nazi bitch? I got you down. You know, that Woody, so help me God, get him and the uh, Andy one and the other one and uh, Greg. Get the three of them together, put them in a goddamn stand-up microwave, and do the human race a great favor. Here's Lake Worth. Hello? Lake Worth is gone? Lake Worth is on there, but they're busy diddling with something, maybe with each other. Okay, uh, diddle away, pal. We don't have time for you. Here's Miami. Hello? Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a short, but uh, not so sweet call. Um, if O.J. gets off, and they're showing how the uh, defense lawyers are trying why, to... Why are you uh, faking a voice? Is there no, some I'm special not. reason for that? No, sir. No. Well, you, it sounds like it to me. It sounds like you're affecting a certain posture in your uh, thing. No, maybe I'm holding the phone too close. Maybe you're holding it too tight. <laughs> And the phone, yeah. Um, well, if, if O.J. gets off... changes the timbre of your voice when you hold it too tight. <laughs> if O.J. gets off, yes. Um, how is he going to have any credibility? Is he going to have to, He's like, gonna move? He's going to be a hero. What, to what, about, what about Jimmy Swaggart? What are you talking about? I mean, if, if everybody everybody watching the TV now is seeing this lawyer trying to trying to talk about this cop who is... It, it's, it, everybody sees it as ridiculous. And it, well, what and do you mean OJ everybody sees off. that it's ridiculous? They still got about 40% of the public think that he's not guilty, and you got about 70 or 80% of the blacks out there who think that he's not guilty. Well, that's and, a uh, huh? That's a given. Right. It's, it's a racial thing. It's a racial thing, and it's a superstar thing. He's a black guy who happened to have been a big superstar. Therefore, there's a whole bunch of people out there. If he stood up and he said it right now, like I've been telling you for weeks, they still won't believe it. Do you think he's going to be able to hold his head up? In yes. He'll hold it up. But I wouldn't look down at the urinal. You might be surprised. Let's go to, um, look at that. We got two open lines in Dade, one at Broward, the Purple Line. They want to hear this crap, man. No. No. Is it something you yeah, simply CNN went to commercial break, so they feel real no, deprived. something I wasn't asked. Was there any other reason to interject question two about the Bronco? It was a question that uh, we wanted answered. I think it was important to know if Mr. Simpson was home. Well, it was important to you, was it? It's important to all of us. Had you been directed by anybody to make that inquiry of Cato Taylor? No. So I take it now, at this point, having been to the Bronco and hurdled the wall and interrogating Kalen, you viewed yourself as a detective very much in the case. Oh, I'm always a detective, yes. In the Simpson case. Is that your perception of yourself? Yes, I was asked to assist those detectives, yes. Now, uh, oh, that emphysema again. Told you that that car yellow normally today. was driven by Mr. Simpson. Yesterday they were green, today they're right. yellow. He's regressing. Yes, I believe he said it was O.J.'s vehicle. And you asked whether he had driven it that night. I believe I did, yes. And Mr. Kalen responded he thought so, but he wasn't sure. He wasn't what? In shul? Correct. I believe so, yes. <laughs> then you got back to the question of, about unusual Yeah, I can just see Kato Kalen in shul right now. Get out of here, you goyish bastard. It's 148 at WIOD. 610 WIOD. We're tired of old people, idiots, and Barry Jackson. Oi! Okay, 152 at WIOD. Let me just give a little uh, thing here for Bob Lincoln again, our trip to Vegas. I mean, if you want to go with Hank and you want to go with all those old people and you want to go to the... Uh, the place that's way off the strip there, to the Hilton, so that Hank can go plunge his brains out at the sports book, and you won't have a good time. And if you want to overpay and pay 600 bucks, then be my guest, okay? Very original, Hank. Nice going, baby. But if you want to go with us on the 15th of June, leaving on a Thursday evening, either at 6.30 or 9.30, we're, hope we're hoping to have uh, two flights if we fill up the two planes, and I think we will. And uh, three nights... Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, coming back uh, Sunday afternoon. Three nights at the Imperial Palace Hotel and Casino. Direct round trip, nonstop flight, Fort Lauderdale to Vegas. Transfers, a welcome cocktail party for our group. Emperor's Breakfast Buffet, Legends and Concert Show. Admission to the Antique Auto Collection. Rental car available at corporate rates. It's going to be a great time again. And you can call Bob Lincoln right now. Everything is official. He's taking credit card numbers. He's taking it's like a first come, first serve deal again, like it was last year, only better organized and more rational and without the grief from the inside. 
So you can call Bob Lincoln at VIP Link Travel and get signed up today or anytime between now and then. 947-6050. 947-6050 in Dade. Toll free from outside of Dade, like in Broward or anywhere else. 233-7264. That's 1-800-233-7264. And also there will be a few rooms available at Caesars at a higher price. And uh, if you want those, grab them now. Here's Coral Springs. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Happy belated 19 plus years going on 20. Thank you. All right. Uh-huh. I saw them. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't, I don't want to be like F. Lee Bailey. I wanted you to answer the question before I interrupted you. Yeah, if the sorry. judge has to admonish him one more time, I think F. Lee goes right in the chair immediately. <laughs> he's answering so fast. I mean, he's asking questions so fast. All of a sudden, Furman's asking F. Lee Bailey questions right now. I'm getting confused. On he's this relentless. Time. Fatso, I seen the other day, and man, oh, man, d- just brings back memories. I love the scenes. Of course, to get the Honey Junior is king. Get the Honey Junior. And I tell you what, when he made that card for that for you that day, it didn't sound as good as when you just recarded it. I but know. Well, I, I was but, very disappointed that day, but now that uh, it's in the thing. Get the Honey Junior. I yeah, can't I think it got. I think it got a little fatter while it was in there. <laughs> it got a little more desperate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the driver showdown for Pompano Park starts tomorrow night. Correct. Yes. Kevin Wiles, uh, when is he going to be driving? Is he, is he... I don't know. I know it's Wally Hennessy and Jeff Gregory tomorrow, and of course we haven't had any spot for that yet, which really uh, frosts my ass since the driver's showdown was my idea three years ago, and it's been a great promotion every Wednesday, and they're finally doing it again, which I'm very excited about. Well, maybe it's going to happen they... on Hank's Pro- show. Probably, uh, yeah, probably on Hank's show. Right. Probably next week it'll be uh, Kevin because it's they, they go number one against number eight. They got the top eight seeds, the top eight drivers right on the standings. So it's uh, Wally is number one, Kevin is number two, so next week he'll be going against number seven, whoever that is. Right, whoever that is. Right. Uh, where did this logo, I heard you mention this about a month or so ago, Fat Rich, and it wasn't Fat Rich doing the handicap Saturday night. It was this, Well, he does the handicapping on Saturday night, but it said Fat Rich from the Neil Rogers show. Who put that in? I he did. Fell off my hunt. He did. He did? He's got nothing to do with this show. From He's the just, Neil uh, Rog- I couldn't believe I told, it. Now, see, I was talking about this yesterday, and I got some lip from some <laughs> asshole, but this, this man has created a whole existence, which is fine. If he's having a good time, more power to him. He's ruined it for me. I mean, I didn't even go last night. I will go tomorrow for the driver's showdown, right. but uh, he's he's killed me. I mean, he brings more bullcrap to that table, more misinformation, more losers than I've ever seen in my life, and then every time that he allegedly has the big information and the big winners, never, it's always the nights when I'm not there. there every yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, oh, Dennis Normandine at a $100 horse, blah, blah, blah. I was all over it. But the nights that I'm there, he feeds more bullcrap, man. you got to bring that shovel that O.J. had in the Bronco. Absolutely. Just Let's Crap. Yeah, last comment I wanted to make. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law's cousin is related to this kid who punts for West Virginia. He's coming into the draft. I don't know if you ever heard of him. His name's Todd Sauerbrunn. No. He led the whole... Sauerbrunn? Sauerbrunn, yeah. He bro- broke all these records in college for punting. I hope that the Dolphins pick him up because with him and Stolio, and I'm sick of these punters. But I thought the Dolphins just uh, signed a punter. I can't think of who the hell it was. I thought they just signed somebody. I hope they, if they signed somebody, I hope it's somebody who could kick it for more than 30 yards and can hit us for more than 10. Well, you know that was sure I mean? a good move getting rid of Reggie Roby, man. Oh, That's absolutely. one thing about, yeah, they're, one they're thing about really... the brainstem, that player, uh, that personnel selection, just like signing uh, Cleveland boy Gary. That was another oh, good Oh, yeah, one. yeah. We're really racking it up. God forbid we, we need should... some help. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great day on the And back to you. Bye. Okay. Yeah, we sure are. We know how to pick them. We need some help. I wonder how long before Randall Hill starts finding where the good stuff is down here, huh? Well, we'll see. Here's uh, Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. I got a pig report for you. Okay. U.S. 1 going north, right when you get before you get on 95. <laughs> In the median. In the three, median. Three Florida State Troopers. That's because it's the 14th of the month. Oh, yeah. Thanks Wait for the good the news. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Too late. So anyway, happy Purim. That's two days away. That's why they're doing it out there this week, because the Jews are celebrating Purim and these uh, cops. And by the way, I finally got to work today without any more uh, confrontations from the Miami Shores cops. I'm going to keep my eye peeled for that every day. Right after, on Monday, I'm saying good things about them or whatever the hell day it was. I guess it was Monday. And then yesterday, I had that uh, incident where the guy, where the two of them pulled out in front of me and nearly hit me there on 87th Street. If that happens again, I'm just going to sit there and sue your ass for about $100 million, you jackholes. The kicker from the Colts is who the Dolphins signed. We don't know what his name is, but he's good. They didn't Stark, sign him any says. What? Stark from Indianapolis. They did not. We sign did him. not sign him. I thought. Oh, they were. Oh, I see. This is another one of those uh, would-be deals. But I did see that thing several days ago that they were talking to him and they were looking at him and they were thinking about it. Ah, no, he's too good. He's too good. We got this Hatcher and we got this other pansy that we had last year. What was this guy's name? Arnold. Oh, Arnold. Yeah, Wayne Arnold. They had Wayne Arnold out there. He couldn't punt it beyond his pupic. When you got a stomach that big, how the hell can you kick it? Wayne Arnold. 
The worst two punters I've ever seen in my life. These two uh, stiffs that we got the la- that you got last year. I got nothing to do with them. Here's uh, Sunrise. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a first time caller. Um, I think the show is funny. Uh, I just want to make a couple points. Okay. Um, why is it that you support only three of the four pro sports teams out here? I never hear any mention of the. Because uh, I don't care about basketball. I'm not interested in, especially not? pro basketball. To me, it's a freak show. It's just a bunch of seven foot guys jamming a basketball. In it's there. a fun show. Well, I don't like it. I mean, I can't support everything, man. I got to only spread it around so thin, you know. Yeah, even if you don't like it, you can call them and diss them. You can talk about them and diss them. I don't want to diss them. I don't follow them. I'm not one of these guys that gets on the air and just opens up a mouth when I don't know what I'm talking about. I talk about things that I'm involved in. I go to the Panther games. I go to football games. Uh, baseball, whenever they might play, I might go to some of those, but I doubt it. And that's mm-hmm. it. I can't be involved in everything, sir. I go to Pompano Park. I go to Hialeah. If Fixed Over ever gets me my passes, I don't care about the NBA. They can stick it. They can stick it. Right. Well, that's the highlight of the game, sticking it in the basket. Yeah, stick this. Stick it in your basket, man. See how it feels, okay? At least there'll be something in there. God almighty. A tisket, a tasket, go uh, fill your basket, you jackass. Another one of these guys. Oh, how come you're not interested in what I am? Because I'm not. I'm not. Like the guy yesterday. Well, when are you going to make a baby, man? I just, my wife and I just had our first baby. You really, you really oh, it's great. I'm not interested in making babies. How about uh, Suds and his wife? Very happily married, straight people are, they don't want to have no baby. And guess what? It may come as a big shock to you, sir, but there's a hell of a lot of heterosexual couples out there. They don't want to have no screaming, crying babies with a bunch of duty all over the place. How do you like that? Oh, really? Yeah, really. See, what you like, you like. What I like, I like. And I know what I like. Believe me, I know what I like. Trust me, and I make no apologies for it, baby. I like it. And whatever you like, more power to you. That leaves something for the rest of us, okay? So go get busy. Go make babies and go see O.J. No. What is it? What is it? I believe all three of those detectives, uh, one was carrying a 2-inch 38 model 36. You hear what he just said? He said, what is it? One was carrying what is it? Smith & Wesson. He's starting to get like sick tongue now, if Lee. I think the stroke could be any second. I don't recall what he was carrying. I was carrying a Beretta. Automatic weapon. Yes. Oh, he's carrying he- a Beretta. Look at that. There's the parrot on his shoulder to prove it, George. Station too big for Randy Rose. Oh, News, hey. talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale.